Thompson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine and third generation manufacturer of Emory Thompson batteries. It was started by my grandfather with a funny name, Emory Thompson. And uh, Emory uh, Thompson invented uh, the machine in 1903, patented in 1905, and in New Rochelle, New York. And that made it the world's first mechanized batch freezer. Uh, the Italian machines, which they call gelato, which is what every machine will do, uh, didn't come along for until 17 years after our machine, and it looked just like ours, which really drives them crazy because they think they invented it. Uh, before we get started, a couple of ground rules. Uh, you're welcome to uh, get up and walk around. You're not uh, locked to your seat if you want to uh, go out and at Sammy, or if you want to go outside for a smoke or anything else like that, I just ask, please don't let Sammy follow you. She'll she'll follow anyone anywhere. So just just watch out for that. Also, we're going to ask you. Uh, the, the best thing I think about this class is the questions. Uh, every class has different questions that we can't anticipate, and so anytime you have a question about what we're doing, just raise your hand, and either of us, we may not answer it right that very second, but we'll acknowledge you with a nod that we got it. Uh, and it's important that you ask the question while we're talking on that subject. If we're talking about uh, ice cream tubs, and then uh, five minutes later we're on a different subject, well, uh, it was, your question was most relevant when we were talking about that. So wave your hand. We'll get to you. We really want to answer all the questions for you that we can. I think that's uh, the best way that uh, Jeff and I can help you. This is Jeff Markow. Jeff owns. Uh, what's no, I own nothing. No, you own this, the, the school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and tell them a little bit about it. Uh, well, most of the well, I guess most of the people here attended the class the last couple of days, right? Uh, and uh, we teach uh, two days prior to this day, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we go through everything from the ground up, uh, from finding a place to staffing it to uh, making all different products. Uh, and now, uh, because of Steve, we have the class right here. So uh, wasn't it helpful to use different machines? Uh, so now we have that option to use different machines so that if you're uh, close to making a decision, you can decide what's right for you, whether you want a, a smaller machine, a larger machine, or a an in-between machine, uh, that's a big benefit as far as I'm concerned. So we have actually two distinctly different classes. Jeff's class is the Monday and Tuesday before mine, and we do it on average every other month. So our next one will be April, April. and then in June, and then uh, August and October. And uh, Jeff's class is hands-on and goes for Tuesday, two days, and then this class, which is where our, uh, my 392 videos come from, Today we'll bump that to 398 how to make videos uh, at emerythompson.com. And uh, we'll be making the ice cream, we'll be running the machines, but... Our, and getting our, silly. Uh, very silly. And, and I'm here to correct all the mistakes he's told everybody in the past. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun, you're going to get to eat a lot of ice cream. It's, it's actually going to turn out by about 1.30 when we ask, would you like to make one more ice cream? And right now everybody's very anxious. And uh, yeah, bring on the ice cream, bring on the ices. Uh, by 1.30 it's going to be, no, no, no more. I can't take any more. And the last ice cream is a, a whopper. Yeah, so save a little room. Um, I'm going to start off, uh, I'm going to pass out my formulas. You're going to pass you. out? I hope not. <laughs> I check my glucose level, I'm good. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, I like to do strange things uh, in ice cream, ices, and dairy-free. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, but I made this one uh, a few weeks ago and absolutely loved it. I just came from teaching at Penn State University. And I said to the crowd, uh, what I'm going to make is, well, well, let me put it this way. Real men don't eat lavender. Uh, but today you're going to eat lavender ice cream. And, I, and I had the same reaction. I, I'm not eating lavender. I mean, what's next? Avocado? Yeah, that's next too. Um, so we're going to make lavender chocolate chip. And I think you're going to be amazed uh, by how good it is. I think uh, you're going to see this spread across the country. Uh, and it, it's really simple to do. Uh, as we get the formula out to you, it's going to be the four quarts of the dairy blend that was delivered to us overnight. 
uh, came out of the cow yesterday and was uh, separated into milk, cream, uh, skim milk, and sugar, and then reblended by professionals. Uh, always kept refrigerated, put into two and a half gallon bags, and delivered to us. So this is the, the best stuff you can possibly get, and we're going to start with that. I have uh, this lavender syrup uh, from France, uh, Harris Maison Routon, France, <laughs> and this was imported. Uh, from France uh, by me, for me, through Amazon. So you can easily get it. It comes right from Amazon. Uh, Jeff, you have another blend, uh, brand over here, don't you? I did. I bought, uh, after I tasted yours, I just ordered more uh, lavender. This is Tarani? Tarani. Tarani makes really terrific syrups. Uh, they're located here in the USA and uh, distributed in from South San Francisco. And this is a, a terrific product. If you're a fancy French restaurant and you want to look fancy, then you finish up this bottle and pour this <laughs> one into it. Uh, but it's still going to be wonderful lavender syrup. And again, you're going, ugh, lavender. That's, that's just too weird. No, weird is uh, ube uh, ice cream. And, and I don't mean putting a car driver in it. Yes? So your, your mix that you're using, you said it's milk cream, skim milk, and sugar. That's it? Yeah, well, some milk fat solids also. I don't know what Which is from the skim milk. Yeah. Yeah, they use a skim milk powder. And you get that yourself, or is that available to anybody who wants to purchase it? That's available to anybody, anybody. and it's all around the country. There However, are da- there are uh, dairies everywhere. Yeah, it, usually a dairy is where you buy it. Yeah. And there are distributors who pick up at dairies in, see the box over there? Mm-hmm. That's how they come, and they deliver to ice cream stores. The concern I have is the additives that they're putting into it, though. Not just this. On some of those that we're seeing online that I'm looking at, there are other. You have to are. you have to search your dairies. Okay. Uh, I don't use a dairy that puts in polysorbate 80. I do realize though that uh, there are some things that are perfectly fine in dairy mixes, like uh, guar gum or carrageenan. These are natural. One's a gum, and another's from a tree, a uh, seaweed rather. And and these are uh, what we call stabilizers, so that the product doesn't go bad so quickly. Uh, so you, you shop, bless you, you shop your dairy. Um, dairies are all over the country. I have a list of dairies. It's not every dairy, but if you have a question, now, of course, I guess you all folks know we're taping this, and this becomes uh, uh, video number 393, and then after that, 394, and so on. Um, you can call me, and I can, I can look up your city and tell you who a dairy is, or I can send you the whole list. Uh, and just because we're using a dairy out of St. Pete doesn't mean someone in San Francisco is going to use a dairy out of St. Pete. You're, you're shipping liquid, and it wouldn't make sense to ship liquid across the country. They've got cows out in uh, California, too. Where are you? Oh, oh well, that's there are perfect. two in Florida. One yeah. is in Boynton Beach, one is in Sarasota. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. there's dairy mix in St. Pete, and there's um, uh, ice cream club in Boynton Beach, and they're both excellent. So what I would do, and I'm getting off track a little bit, what what I would do is I would bring in both dairies, and I would run it through the machine. I would put in the same amount of vanilla, just make vanilla ice cream, and taste it. Uh, My my criteria for picking a dairy is, uh, first off, has a taste. Well, I like A better than B. All right, what about the price? Well, A is 25 cents a quart more than B, but I like it so much I'll go with that. And then the third criteria, very surprisingly, is do I like the people? I'm going to give them $25,000, $30,000 a year, and do I like them? Uh, back up in the Bronx, we had two dairies, and uh, one of them was Panza and Sons out of New Jersey. Wonderful people. Vito, Panza, realized that, uh, okay, this is the, <laughs> Yo, the, Vito. This is the dead uh, of, of winter, and you're not selling as much ice cream as you are in July, uh, so money's tight. We'll cut back on your bill in February and we'll add it on to the uh, July bill. That's, that's a good businessman. The other dairy, uh, who I won't name, uh, if you were five minutes late on your bill, they sent out my two guys, Bruno and Knuckles, and they came and they broke your kneecaps because you owed the money. And I, I don't want to work with a dairy that's going to come and break my kneecaps. So it is important, do you like these people? And that's true of anything in business. Do you like your supplier? If you feel like you're being abused by them, then don't deal with them. So we're going to put four quarts of the blend in. I'm going to put in three quarters 
of this bottle of syrup and two bags of Giardelli uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips. And that's it. That's, that's all that's in here. Um, nobody else has videos like we do, but if you find one from, some, from Italy, oh, you're going to find that they've got something that measures the fat content and something else measures it, and it's all in grams. And I don't know about you, but I failed grams and I failed kilometers you know, in, in high school. You know, I'm still stuck on miles per hour and, and ounces. Uh, they make it overcomplicated. This is a simple process. So we've already sanitized the machine. First thing I'm going to do is make sure the gate's closed. The last thing I did here this morning was I sanitized the machine, and in order to drain it out, I, I have the gate open. And then oftentimes, and you'll do it someday, you're pouring the blend into the machine or your Italian ice or whatever, and it's going all over the floor, and the brain doesn't react fast enough. You, the first thing it thinks is, oh, that's Steve Thompson. I hate him. The machine leaks. Well, you left the gate open. So close the gate. Good thing I was here to do that. It was a good thing you were here to do that. It's a good thing you're here. So I'm going to just pour this in. And I find that if I raise it up above the lip, I'm less likely to spill. <laughs> and just to make you all feel bad, uh, I only have one working eye. So if a half-blind person can do this, uh, I'm sure you could be able to do it too. It's really that simple. Everybody always wants me to have a bucket underneath, but uh, I don't spill. Or if I do, I do it in a grand fashion. And we forgot to change that shelf. So I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to hit start. And I'll talk about the infinite overrun control later. I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop that and go to home. I'm going to hit make ice cream. I'm going to pick something a little bit heavier. I'm going to do super premium. Start, and now here's my refrigeration star, and we're freezing. And the timer has started showing how long I've been freezing. So I don't waste any time at all. Now I'm going to pour this in. This takes a while because it's got a handy pour. This takes a long while. Why don't we take we tried to off. get this pouring thing out of the bottle, but we Why don't couldn't. we take that off? So these three guys go into a bar. One guy says, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, we, all right, we could have taken that off. We tried, remember? We couldn't get the lid off. Or we tried it at Penn State, Mike and I. Did you have your handy dandy pocket knife? We had a chainsaw. Uh, get a little glass in the ice cream? Yeah. <laughs> well. So all the while this is happening, it's freezing. We're in the freezing process. I had a uh, father, when I was raising four kids, we, uh, Sesame Street was our babysitter. And uh, Sesame Street, we'd plunk the kids in front of it and they'd watch uh, Sesame Street all weekend long. Uh, this one father called up, he had a six-year-old and a four-year-old, and he had plunked them down in front of the TV to watch Emory Thompson videos. And he walked by the room and the six-year-old is saying to the four-year-old, now don't try this with anything but an Emory Thompson. And I thought, whoa, I have really come of age. Uh, so I think that's a lot of chips. Too much? I think it's a lot of chips. Okay. So don't try this with any other machine. We can actually pour all things into the machine. Nuts, cookies, candies. I like to take whole bananas. You like that? Okay. Whole bananas and just drop them right in the machine. My drive systems, which you'll see over on the table over here, are uh, so heavy compared to anybody else's that uh, everything goes right in the machine. Other machines, they have an opening about that big and they've done it, and, they'll, and it says in their warranty, if you put whole Oreo cookies into this machine, or nuts, or even bananas, we'll void your warranty. Uh, we welcome it. And the reason I do it is you get a much better flavor. If you're making strawberry ice cream, uh, and you're having to add the strawberries as the ice cream's coming out, all you're really making is vanilla ice cream with strawberries added. 
But if I can put the strawberries in there, now I've got a true strawberry uh, ice cream. In fact, I came up with two terms. I call it fruit flavor and fruit identity. And uh, uh, let's use chocolate chips as our fruit for, I mean, chocolate chip cookies. I take half my bag, I've got a one pound bag of chocolate chip cookies, and I put half of them in here. It'll grind them up like a Cuisinart, it'll turn it this nice chocolatey brown color. And if you were blindfolded and tasted it, say, yeah, that's chocolate chip cookie ice cream. But you take the blindfold off and you go, well, where, where are the cookies? I don't see any cookies. So I take my bag, of my second half of the bag, and I take each cookie and I snap it between my thumbs and break it into about four pieces. Now I've got chunks of cookies. So I've got my flavor uh, identity in here. I've got my fruit flavor in here, my what is it, and out here I open the gate halfway and I'm shaking in pieces of uh, cookie, so I've got my identity. Oh, I can see cookies. So you're getting the best of both worlds. Uh, I, I helped put haagen into business, Reuben Madison, his mother, about 1968, 69. Back then, they used our biggest machine, which you'll see on the factory floor. That put them in business. Same with Ben and Jerry and, and just about everybody else you can imagine in the world. And uh, they had truly a great ice cream. haagen today is still a truly great ice cream because Reuben Mattis worked so hard on his formulas and then nobody ever changed them. When Pillsbury bought them, nobody changed it. Uh, but today, with their machines, it's a thousand gallons an hour, and it's just ramming vanilla through a small tube, and then uh, all the flavors added at the end. So <clears throat> haagen may look like strawberry ice cream, but it's vanilla ice cream with strawberries added. By being able to put the product in here and, uh, and add it also at the end if I want, uh, I have a much better flavor profile than I can get uh, anywhere else. And that's what it's all about. Uh, we, we may talk today some about butter fat content uh, or air content and, and the, uh, uh, the infinite overrun is my invention now of 22 years and nobody's ever copied it so that I can do any kind of product I want. But nobody ever walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, gee, that's the best air content I ever ate. Or I can't wait to come back tomorrow because I love the butter fat content. What, what they say is, wow, that mint chip was really minty. And, and, I, and the chocolate chips were so fresh. Uh, people eat flavor, and you gotta keep that in mind. That's all they taste is flavor. Uh, nobody says, uh, wow, that Ruffles potato chip is terrific. They don't really buy it for the ridges, they buy it for the taste and the salt and the flavor that is unique to uh, Ruffles. So that's what you're trying to do. Um, when I was at Penn State, Capigiani was there, and they have just, taken a direction, they have continued in the direction that they go, which is so incredibly wrong, it, it just amazes me. They're trying to tell people, you're new young entrepreneurs, uh, you're very busy, you've got the store to run, you've got QuickBooks to run, you've got to do the ordering, uh, you've got to make the ice cream, and we have designed a machine for you that is so automated, it does all its own thinking for you, and when the ice cream's ready, if you're not there because you're out working with, uh, with uh, taking care of a customer, you can leave it in the machine for an hour and a half. Well, you try leaving a cake in the oven for an hour and a half and tell me it isn't gonna change. It's actually gonna burn to a crisp. It, it makes no sense at all. This is not rocket science, but we're here to show you just how simple it is to make the product that you say to your employees, okay, for the next three hours, I'm making ice cream. Don't bother me. I cannot be doing three different things at once. Um, so they come up, uh, one guy put it very well, he said that he had bought a Capigiani, or it could be a tailor which is out of business on batch freezers, uh, or Electrofreeze which is owned by Capigiani, or Stolting which is Italian. It could be any of those machines, um, and, and uh, the secret to it is that you're putting, that we can put the ingredients in the machine, and that you are here to make ice cream and then finish and then you can go sit down in your lounge chair for the next few hours. Uh, just very straightforward. But their approach is trying to automate something that uh, has no business being automated. I know that when Paula, my wife, uh, bakes a, a vanilla cake, and my birthday's coming up so I hope to get a vanilla cake, uh, she puts together the ingredients, she puts it in the oven, and sets the timer for 23 minutes. After 23 minutes, she doesn't just pull the cake out, she goes over with a fork or a knife and checks it, 
and if it's if it's not right because it's, it's sticking, uh, she continues it for a couple more minutes. Every flavor of ice cream has a different freezing time. It's not complicated, but what extends freezing time is uh, how much sugar is in the product. This product is going to take considerably longer than many of my other flavors because that lavender syrup is just pure sugar. There's a lot of sugar in that lavender. The higher the sugar content, the longer the freezing time. Uh, ice cream is about eight minutes. Uh, Italian ices, yes? Just gonna check. Italian ices is uh, about 14 minutes because it has such a high sugar content. Strawberry ice cream will be a minute longer than vanilla. Um, and so it's very simple. You just go back and you check your machine. I'm checking it more than I normally do because if you freeze up the machine, no big deal. Uh, you can just pull, uh, take everything out. Uh, I've embarrassed myself enough times here though by freezing up the machine <laughs> while I'm talking. I go, boy, it's gotten quiet in here. <laughs> and so I'm trying not to do that today. Um, any questions so far? Yes. Oh, what? The ice cream gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and then the infinite overrun control shuts it down so that you can't hurt the machine. Uh, a question back there. Uh, you chose the uh, super premium yes. as opposed to homemade. homemade. Uh, what's going on there? Uh, difference is about 20-25% uh, air content. I'm putting about 20 20% less air into the product than I am with homemade. Um, just slows down. slows down the drive. If you have, this is, uh, and nobody's been able to duplicate it because uh, basically what I'm doing is if you put cream in here and stir it with a whisk, it's going to remain cream. If you put cream in here and get an electric mixer, uh, blending stick and put it in here, it'll become whipped cream because it's spinning faster. So on that principle, all my machines, uh, back to 1998, I think it was, were one-speed machines. Now, we can slow down the drive to anything we want. Um, it, it's, and you say, well, what's so big, de big deal about that? In my dining room, I can dim my lights down. Isn't that the same as slowing down a motor? I'm dimming the lights. It's the same concept, but when you dim the lights in your dining room from 100 watts down to, say, a, a romantic 25 watts for dinner, uh, you are literally robbing the power from the light, light bulb. It's no longer a 100 watt light bulb, it's a 25 watt light bulb. You can't have that on a machine because a 25 watt light bulb, when it should be 100, is not going to drive the machine. It's going to lock up. It's not a two, uh, one horsepower motor anymore, it's a, a quarter horsepower. So with my invention, it doesn't matter what speed you're at, uh, it's still going to be a one horsepower motor and or a three trans horsepower motor. And it translates into making different products. You can make gelato, homemade, super premium, you, Italian ice, anything. What RPMs is it? Uh, right now I think we're at 165, but you know what, it means nothing. Because if you, were, if you could run a Capogianni at 165, it would not translate out to the same product. It's 165 on my machine. We go as low as 130 and up to 234, and everything in between. And although I've, I've got presets in here, I've got about uh, 12 to 14 different products. So if you wanted to do dairy-free, you push the words dairy-free, it goes to the speed I want. If you're an executive chef and you say, well, Steve's a jerk, he doesn't know what he's doing, and I don't want 165, I want 170, uh, you can manually up and down it. And we use the up and down because if I want to fill pints here, <clears throat> if I have it at this speed, the ice cream's going to come out so fast that it's hard to fill pints. And I want those pints consistent. I don't want to take too long. But I can tap this down to a lower speed and now fill my pints. I still personally like to fill pints by dumping it all out at once, put it in the freezer, continue making ice cream for another 45 minutes, and then go back to it, and then with a spade, uh, not a scoop because they can hang up if you're doing repeated work, but a spade like that, I can fill those pints very fast. And that's a nice way to do it. Pints are a big sell. One little trick about pint, pints that uh, only us old timers know is after you fill it up, you then take it and you put it in your freezer upside down. 
because if there is an air gap in there somewhere that you missed, when the customer takes the lid off, it's completely full and smooth, and when they stick their spoon in it, if there was an air gap, it uh, disappears. And we're not cheating the public because it has to have a certain weight by law. So it's just a way to make it look nicer. Turn your pints upside down. When you're selling pre-made pints, do you need to buy like a green label? If you're selling pre-made pints outside of your own store, if you're selling it to a restaurant, uh, you have to uh, label it. Uh, you don't, nutrition labeling is not uh, required, but everybody reads it. Uh, what is required is that it was manufactured at plant number 183462. They even protect you. They don't put your address. You get given a plant number. But if you're selling pints, if, I'm, if I've got Jeff's store and I've got a cabinet full of pints and I'm selling them out, I don't have to do any labeling whatsoever. But if you're selling them to Walmart? Then, if, yeah, if you're selling to Walmart, you've got to do it. I need that. Oh, okay. Want to put them in there? Yeah. Now this product compared to other ones I'm going to make is going to be a little softer. The softness has no bearing on the finished product whatsoever. Um, but with the high, very high sugar content, it will look a little softer. What do you think? A little more? Yeah, I think so. Okay. We'll go a little bit more. Yes? Are the presets adjustable? The presets are adjustable, but it's set in the, uh, we set it up. Uh, from my 45 years of experience, I know that I want to run gelato at a certain speed. If you don't like my speed, just come over here and tap it down. No, no, no. So, so for a stupid reason that I disagree with you, right? And your homemade <laughs> setting is set to 240. And I say I wanted to, you know, uh, 235. Can I adjust that preset? No, but you okay. can go like that. Okay. okay. That's pretty easy. No, because the rest of the world wants a preset. Right. So very, very simple to operate. I don't put gadgets on my machine unless they're going to improve. And it's not a gadget. It's been around for 23 years is when I invented it. Um, it's a proven product, mm -hmm. and nobody else in the world has it. And that's why, quite frankly, uh, although I run this as a family business, we're the largest manufacturer in the world. We have three factories here that are manufacturing these. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. Oh, I need a... I got one. The Italians pull ice cream out, or gelato, one spatula at a time. I don't have time for that. I've got to put in my several hours of making ice cream and then go find my Barca lounger. So we designed this to be a real production machine. So that's six liters right there. Six liters? That's six liters. Uh, I'm going to get a smaller one. Uh, we rate the machine at uh, six liters, six quarts. Uh, you'll find out pretty quick it makes more than that, but you got to set a number somewhere, and so I would rather set the production low, and you'll be surprised that you get more out of it. So come on up and try it, and I think you'll be amazed. Oh well. I never said I was neat. And this barrel is pitched slightly forward so that um, when you're rinsing the machine, it's going to rinse out everything. The design of the dasher is such that there's almost nothing left in this machine. Now, Jeff and I argue on one point. I say that uh, eight hours from now, this product is going to be more intense in flavor uh, than, uh, than it is right now. Jeff says that it's, it is what it is. So um, if you were here tomorrow, we could taste it and see who's right. But everybody has different opinions. This is you, uh, plastic. Yeah. Can you freeze in these? Yes. And scoop in these? They're designed for it. How do you seal them? They come with lids. It's called gelatosupply.com. No, I'll talk about it right now. 
just set a timer because you know pretty much how much how long or do you have to keep Absolutely. No, you set a timer. Uh, I've well, got one right here. Check in it, so I didn't know. Well, we got a timer right there. Uh, you go out and buy a six dollar timer uh, rather than pretty much on the dot. But each yeah. flavor. With each the, with each flavor. Yeah. Could have used more chips. <laughs> now you, that was my formula. Jeez. Well, who's the fool? You for asking me or me yeah, for saying no? I, I don't know. But more chips. <laughs> yes. Do you, as a general rule, use super premium as your setting, or does it just vary by the ice cream you make? Uh, as a general rule, I like super premium. I like a little less air, uh, but not a whole lot less. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I got a whole day ahead of me. And it depends on the size of the machine and the size of the huh? business. You certainly oh, may not be able I know what he was thinking. To start, but eventually you'll be in one. Because it's about inventory. It's not about how fast you freeze the ice cream, it's how much inventory you're going to have. And you could have 17 of those chest freezers, or you could have one uh, upright. My ideal situation. Uh, would be to have a walk-in. A walk-in freezer means, because I, I can run this thing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what they're designed for, and that's why we're so big in third world countries. But once you fill up whatever freezer space you have, you can't make any more ice cream. You have no place to eat, put it. So it's a, it's a subjective item based on how much money you have today. I'm going to clean up. It's all yours. <laughs> oh, what happened? How'd that happen? Uh, I walked away, and there was a little dripping the thing coming down. How, how was it? I didn't try. I got my portion right there. I want to get everything done here. You can stop that. Okay, this is ready to roll. I'll, can I take these? Or you when need you them? become president and CEO of your company, you too will be on the floor clean. This is it's, it's lavender. It's part of the job. Lavender and, uh, chocolate chip. Or lavender. That's what you love about your own business because everything you do, good or bad, has impact. Uh, you you control it instead of working for Dow Chemical where everybody controls everything for you. Uh, this is your business and you take the accolades when things work well and you take the hit when something goes wrong. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and he's going to make something really exciting. I don't know. I don't either. I don't know. I but think we hoping. need more chips in here. And more chips. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> More chips. You know what happened? Yesterday we made something in this EB315. Had too many chips. Ah. So I just thought. Okay. Little did I know. Well, what are you making now? Uh, well, I'm going to try to make a creamsicle in two stages. Okay. Which machine? Uh, the 24. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll... I usually try to do something I've never done in making it so that we learn together. And today's no exception. We're going to make creamsicle. You know what creamsicle is, right? We've all grown up with creamsicles. Orange sherbet and vanilla ice cream mixed together. Well, I do make creamsicle at the store, but I make it that way. I make it swirled together. But today, Steve uh, invented something. I, he didn't invent it today, but uh, he has come up with something, and I thought we would try it. It's this. This fits perfectly in a six-quart container. So what I thought we would do is make a two-stage creamsicle. First, we'll make orange sherbet, and we'll put it in one half. Then we'll make vanilla ice cream, put it in the other half, and then remove this. And when the girls scoop, they just simply scoop appropriately or, or whatever, and you get creamsicle in your cup. So I thought we'll give it a shot. This is a neat little thing. Uh, you have different sizes of these? Uh, no, just for the... Uh, right, that's what I thought. They come in one size, and one size fits all six-quart containers. So we'll give it a shot. I've never done it. We'll see how it works. Now, the, we have two things to make. We have vanilla ice cream and orange sherbet. Uh, which first? Sherbet. Why? Um, after watching that, I would say that vanilla ice cream seems a little easier. Seems what? Seems a little easier from an ingredients perspective than the sherbet. 
I think they're all easy. This is, this is the most amazing business in the world. As we talked for two days about it, this is stupid simple. You make ice cream, which I've turned all of you, we had 13 in our class, and you all feel confidently that you can make world-class ice cream or ices now, don't you? Yep. They all had a, tr a try at the machine. They all made product, and it's simple. Shirley, you made product, and uh, not that you're different, but uh, you've never done it before. And you did it, and it was perfect. Not only did she make ice cream, she tore down the machine, she built up the machine, she put it back together. It's just, uh, it's a simple thing. So, uh, we are gonna make sherbet first, but my reasoning is this. If we make the orange sherbet first, and then we go to vanilla ice cream, there's going to be a little residue in the machine of orange sherbet. And that's what I want, so that when we make vanilla ice cream, the vanilla ice cream is orangey <coughs> vanilla, adding to the experience of eating our sherbet. So although you can't taste this right away because we have to let it freeze to some extent, uh, you know what, we can, now, that, you want to eat something that we made yesterday? Should we take something out? Yes? <laughs> How do you know what we made yesterday? We made li licorice dirt ice cream. <laughs> uh, well, I guess we could eat uh, a slide, Mystic Slide. <laughs> we'll let that temper just a hair, although it's probably fine. Uh, grab another one. Grab a full one. Okay, are we ready? We're so ready. here's our ingredients. By the way, I have a book for sale. Uh, where's my book? <laughs> where's the book? You have it? Okay. I have a book for sale right here. It's got the 20 some odd original recipes that started my store. And we made one of them yesterday. We made the coconut yesterday, which was outstanding. Uh, and chocolate velvet, we made that too. So uh, it's here, and it's uh, 50 bucks. Should I say that? No? Yes, okay. I would. Okay. My uh, credit card. Or, or cash. cash. Right. Um, okay, uh, it's normally 60, by the way, but he makes me sell it for 50. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the ingredients in our creamsicle ice cream, in the orange sherbet part, sherbet is cream ice. Have you heard of cream ice? Sure, well now we know what it is, but sherbet is cream ice. So let's start with the water. Wanna know how much? The, the recipe for, oh gosh, I hate to embarrass anybody. What's the recipe for cream ice? Oh, oh rats, it's three, two, one. Three, two, one, it's hard to forget that for cream ice. Three quarts of water. Shirley, what's the two? Sugar. sugar. <laughs> two pounds of sugar. Three quarts of water. Two pounds of sugar. Boy, look at you cleaning up, huh? I found that if I don't clean up as I go, I trip over myself. Okay, we have, yes. Is there a reason you don't? Put the sugar in with the water and then just dissolve and throw it in? Yes, because I'm obstinate. Okay, so chemically speaking, it doesn't change anything? Chemically, no. It doesn't, uh, the way it freezes? No, but we do have different uh, opinions Tell on this. Tell what the manufacturer recommends. Well, you're the manufacturer. Oh, yeah, I am. You're, you're going to... <laughs> the manufacturer recommends dissolving it in the water so that as not to abrade the blades. Yeah. Yeah. 
which are going to last Hooey. about six years. Yeah, hooey. Uh, but if you keep adding sugar, if you were in Italian. They'll last five years, 12 months, 11 months, and three days. <laughs> but then there's the manufacturer's recommendation. Look at these blades. These blades are astounding. And, and I don't make any money on selling these machines. This is, uh, hold out your hand. No. No. This, you're not going to, these, these are unbelievable. It's like brake pads. Anyway. Uh, the Carl brake pads. Anyway, <laughs> my thought on that is that we have the greatest mixer in the world here. And like that, that sugar's dissolved. Like that. Okay, we have three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar. What's the one? One is ice cream mix because sherbet or cream ice is part dairy. Small part, but part nonetheless. When you, uh, no camera, all right. I'll bring it over here. When you order the, uh, the mix from a dairy, it comes in these boxes. And the boxes contain how many bladders? Two bladders. Each bladder is how much? Ten quarts. That's right. Two and a half gallons. And they are just like this. And they're durable until you drop them on the floor. Then they explode. And then you've got four hours of cleaning up to do. So don't do that. So we need one quart of this, correct? Everyone agrees? <laughs> Anybody care? <laughs> one quart of mix, yes. I can hold it. Yes. I see 10% of the box, so that's seen. Oh. That's I can't hear you, the machine's running. She was asking if it was a 10% mix. The what? Butterfat, 10%. 10 yes. 10%. 10 percent. Mix comes in, uh, well, gelato is like 8, uh, but ice cream starts at 10. So ice cream will be 10% butterfat, 12%, 14, 16, 18, or 22. The same thing. Yeah. See, that's a misnomer. I know what you're thinking. It was really creamy for 10%, right? It's the machine. It's not the butterfat. Uh, okay, so we've got three, two, and now one. Now, in a sense, we have vanilla sherbet, right, which we, we don't want. So we want to add orange, we want to make it orangey. So, I've been letting uh, a can of uh, FCOJ thaw out, and uh, we'll just throw this in there too. Now you don't have to do this I just thought that, because we're going to add some orange goo, but I just thought that orange juice, boy, you feel good, you're adding orange juice to it. And it's concentrated. We'll just add that. Minute Maid. Now, is it Walmart brand? No. Is it Minute Maid? No. It's Minute Maid. Did you just get here? I didn't see you before. Okay. You have a name tag? Yeah. All right. Now we're going to add some of this because I like to kick it up a notch with orange flavor. I like a lot of flavor. And I, for orange, I like Hartley's. Hartley's Orange. Available at Restaurant Depot. And we'll add a little bit of that. So we have three, two, one orange juice and this. And Javon, what are we going to do now? Freeze. Oh, uh, yeah, turn on the freezer. 
What are we going to do before we turn it on? Taste it. Taste it. Let's see if it's what we want. This is the beauty of making ice cream. Is it all science? No, it's art and science. The science is your ingredients. The art is now tasting it and adjusting it if you need be. When Steve made his lavender, I walked over, I tasted it, I added more lavender. That's, it wasn't on his sheet, but I felt it needed a little more. And everyone is gonna make different levels of sweetness and flavor. That's your taste. Of course, it's perfect. So we'll turn on the refrigeration. And you'll hear the compressor go on. You hear that? And that's all there is to that. <laughs> So any questions? Yes? Whenever you order the dairy mix, what is uh, like a minimum order requirement? A what requirement? They have like a minimum order requirement for you? Yes. When I first started, I had the small machine and uh, I didn't know anything, so I had to uh, have some dairy mix. And I called up the one of the two places in Florida and I said, I need dairy mix. He said, how many cases? I said, oh, I just need a couple of quarts. And after the laughter subsided, he said, you have to get a minimum of a few cases. I said, well, I don't need a few cases. I said, how about if I meet the truck and get one case? And he said, okay. So there I am, driving along the street, pulling onto the shoulder, opening my trunk, a truck comes up behind me, a guy grabs a box, puts it in my trunk, and I count out money and give it to him and drive away. And the cops were right there, right on me. I open your trunk. And I, I said, it's ice cream mix. And he said, right. Hands on the hood. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill half of this with orange sherbet. Now, I don't think we'll, let me see, what did we have? We had three quarts of water. Two pounds of sugar. Forget the sugar, three quarts of water, one quart of mix is four, one quart of orange is five, and then a little bit of FCOJ, so a little bit over five quarts of liquid going in there. And this is a six quart container divided in two. So we're probably gonna get two out of it, aren't we? Yeah. Two of them. So we'll try two. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Yeah, there's a hair left in here. Let's get. Waste not, want not, right? Okay. All right, what else? Yes. Can the dairy mix be uh, frozen? Yes, the we have dairy mix frozen there. So if I change the expiration date on it, so I'll call that box out of that Frozen, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. That is so hard, it's harder than rock. Do we'll change any of the No, no, I've never found it to. And what the problem is, it freezes so hard that thawing it out is going to take two days. If I have to make ice cream Monday and I didn't get a delivery of fresh mix and I tell the girls I need that, they take it out Saturday night and put it in the sink of water filled up over the, the bladders. And even then, by Monday, when you're pouring it, you still get some ice. Not ice, but frozen. Uh, but it's always best to have uh, delivery. 
But the delivery, you have to work out how much you're going to use, how much you need. You don't want to be short, but you don't want to be too far over. The, the, the expiration on it, always imagine you're going to the store and buying a quart of heavy cream and putting it in the fridge. When that goes bad, that goes bad. I find it's about 10 days to two weeks. Uh, and you, you want to smell it. Well, you, some, you may not want to smell it, uh, but always give it a smell. I, I'm in a habit of always smelling it because I don't know what they delivered. Maybe this was an old bag, <laughs> not the driver. Maybe it was an old bag uh, laying in the back of the truck or something. Woo. So is this uh, ready to scoop, you think? Uh, I think it should be. Where is the zero? Yesterday we made, uh, because we can't eat this, and I know you're dying to have some ice cream, uh, yesterday we made uh, Mystic Slide, which is like a mudslide. It has a little alcohol in it, uh, but not too much. Uh, so we can have some of that. It's, it's a good breakfast ice cream. <laughs> uh, an eye-opener. Okay, uh, but first I want to get these things in the freezer. After I make them, will you put them in the freezer? Uh, and let's see how these things work. I don't know. I hope they work all right. Looks like it might, but there'll be pressure against it. It's a good idea theoretically, right? Where did that uh, zero scoop go? There it is. I highly recommend use, yes. How long would you be able to keep that in the freezer for? What do you mean? Like you said, you're going to freeze it. Oh, the mix or the ice cream? The ice cream. Oh, that'll, don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, but, as Steve always says correctly, if it's been in the freezer for six months, you made the wrong flavor. It's not selling. Well, he's smart. You know, that's, that's how to judge it. There are flavors that'll move every day and flavors that'll move every week. And then there are those duds that don't move. Brand new zero, huh? Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. We gave them out as wedding gifts. You what? We gave them out as wedding gifts. Really? Yeah. Engraved. Well, yeah, white ones engraved with our names on it. Really? Uh -huh. Where are they? Uh, they're with all the guests at the wedding. Okay, now, let's see. Okay, I think we're ready to try this, uh, see what happens. Okay, we're gonna try it. I always wait for the compressor to, there we go. Okay, here we go. I wonder if it's gonna lean to the side. Well, that's what I thought. It might. But we'll see. But then, when you put it in the freezer, it'll just push back. Why? 
Well, you, if it leans to one side, you just push it forward because the ice cream's really Oh, okay, forward. okay. We named this the Great uh, Slade Harmon, my uh, vice president, who came up with this, named it the Great Divide. And then one day I was on a business trip and I'm reading about uh, how this lady loved uh, uh, Bluebell ice cream, the Great Divide ice cream. I, they've stolen my name. So I did the research and I found out they had it five years before we did. So don't tell anybody I stole their name. <laughs> Now you could do this with cardboard. That's uh, how they used to do that's it. That's how they used to do it, really. Uh, but cardboard attracts bugs and roaches and everything else I can think of to tell you so that you'll buy this one. <laughs> okay. We got them. We could use this one and let them taste it. Oh no, we have they'll taste that. Okay. They'll taste this when it's done, which will be later today. Yeah. Okay. Now, there is some residue of ices left in the machine, which is exactly what we want. <laughs> how, how is this back Is it... Um, Driven underneath? Yeah. No, it's, it's divided right. and clean. Very now, you said you have a oh, divider for one yeah, of these yeah, yeah, trays? Yeah, okay. yeah. A double? I feel like uh, No, a triple. Well, let's see what it looks like. Maybe, because we don't have much, maybe we can use the triple. Okay. All right? Yeah, well, I... Um, Okay, and then I'll let you do your thing here. Now, we're going to need that when we get the vanilla done, okay, as this. Uh, but hold on, maybe we'll make a, uh, a thing here. Okay, so now we have to make vanilla ice cream to go with our creamsicle, uh, to make our creamsicle. So, vanilla ice cream we're going to use, uh, well, how much, uh, let's go with uh, half. We'll use five quarts of mix. If, you're, if you have a 24, it's a miracle because one bag, a full bag, makes a batch of ice cream. And that's perfect. You never have to measure the mix or anything. It's all based on a bag. In my book, you'll see 10 quarts for the big machine and two and a half to three quarts for the small machine. It's a miracle. Did you want this? What? That's our um, mm. divider for gelato for Okay, let's flavors. see what we got. Well, let's put vanilla in one. Why not put I that mean, in the center and vanilla on either side? Oh, but you know, that's some why days, you make the big bucks. Some days. The mind just clicks. Okay, why don't you do that while I'm making ice cream? You got it. All right, uh, ice cream. Five quarts of mix. Five quarts of mix. Uh, a handy tip when you're measuring, remember? Put the, line away Put the lines away from you so that you can see it as it fills up. That was what, a 30 cent tip, I think, or something? Which nobody paid me for. All right, five quarts of mix, which is a half a batch. Actually, we could always eat some vanilla ice cream if we have leftover, right? Everybody loves vanilla. Everybody loves vanilla. Number, Number one, one flavor. All right, so we'll add this to the machine. How much did we fill? The center? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Just a little and, more you know, why don't we put the vanilla on both sides? Gee, I'm glad you thought of that. Hey. Okay, five quarts of mix. That's what we're doing. <laughs> and vanilla. My proportions on vanilla are generally one quart gets one ounce. One ounce to a quart. That's just how I always like doing it. So five ounces.
and uh, what else? A little vanilla. A little vanilla. A little Tarani vanilla to give it a little punch. We're ready? We're ready. Do you know that when the football players on the winning team of the Super Bowl, they ask them where they're going, what are they going to do? Disneyland. And they go to Disneyland and Disney World, they Disney say. Disney World. They're paid to say that. Really? I had no idea. It's in the contract with the NFL. Burst my bubble. Well, you know. This has they, nothing to do with anything. It just came They get mind. a free parade. They get a parade. And yeah. they probably put them up in a hotel there. Probably get to have so, dinner with Mickey and Minnie. Right. Not bad. Well, imagine having to do that. Ah, that's perfect because we have vanilla with a, a background of orange. So it'll go great with our orange sherbet, creamsicle. Uh, okay, we have that there. We have, what'd you do with the, uh, the try thing? It's in the uh, freezer with the- Here, uh, yeah. okay. You know where it is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so we are, uh, we're good. Thank you all for coming. Who doesn't have, by the way, just for kicks, who here is interested in pursuing a career in Italian ices? Two, three. Uh, the rest of you, ice cream? Is this working? Rest of you, ice cream? Okay. Well, you're open, right? Could be anything. Good deal. Although in Minnesota, you try to sell Italian ices, they're gonna lock you up. In Minnesota, Italian ices. First of all, they don't know what Italian ices are Mike. in Minnesota. What do they know? What? What do they know? They know ice cream. Mike, I'm pulling 114. All right, a couple of questions. What about custard? Someone had a question about custard? No? You, sir. Why did you measure your fiscal I just wanted to see that it was on the mark. I like to test my machines and see that everything's good. You would never have to do it. Uh, but I just wanted to see uh, where I am. So what range? Um, 108 to 117. Uh, I'm a manufacturer. I do stuff like that. You all done? Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. What would be a storage temperature and building temperatures for the different varieties like ice cream, sugar, Italian ice cream, Steve will address that. Hello, question. I'm sorry, what was the question? His question was, what are the different uh, storing temperatures for Italian ice cream, ice, and ice cream? Okay, ice cream, uh, ice scoop at somewhere between six and eight degrees. Gelato's around uh, 10, uh, 10 degrees, 11 degrees. These are all in Fahrenheit. Uh, Italian ice, the way I make it, uh, and Jeff, sugar, water, and flavor, uh, 16 degrees. If you go, and my personal feeling is if you go into an ice cream parlor and you see six degree ice cream next to Italian ice and they're both scoopable, run like hell. Uh, there's a lot of chemicals in the Italian ice to bring, retard the temperature down. So I use a separate cabinet. When you go into the kitchen later, uh, you can take a look at a, just a small dipping cabinet and we can turn that thermostat up to uh, 16 and it's ideal for Italian ices. What was the other product? Uh, it, as far as storing your product, your inventory, uh, the way I do it, Jeff's making it fresh daily and so he's not having to keep it very cold. Uh, I'm pulling as cold as I can get. 
Um, my cabinets will go to 10 below, but I'm not in the ice cream business. Uh, if I, I would like to get uh, uh, 15 below. Uh, I'm sorry? Negative 15. Yeah. Uh, negative 20 is overkill. Yeah. I recognize you're saying you're not in the ice cream business, but you know, there's a lot of things out there talking about the glass freezer. Yeah. Versus just taking it and putting it in the bottom of a chest freezer. Mm -hmm. Jeff and I uh, differ on this, but I have come up with a, a happy medium where I think we're both hitting the same general concept. It's all about money. Um, if, if you call up one person, they'll tell you that it's going to cost you, uh, you know, if you call up one of these uh, gelato companies, they're going to tell you it's going to cost $150,000 to $200,000 to get into business. Uh, Jeff says one number, I say a little higher, I say maybe about $35,000. Uh, so at that level, my whole approach, and, and Jeff's is too, uh, if, if you're not in the business, you're not making any money. You're just thinking about it. But if we can get you into business uh, and let the business grow, as the millennials say, organically, uh, which I think means just let it grow. And as money's coming in, you can now spend money on uh, more equipment as you need it. Like I said, any of these machines can be run 24 hours a day. But if you run out of freezer space, you can't make any more product. So I would like to have Got yeah, a little freezing in there. Uh, I would like to have uh, a walk-in freezer at 15 below. That would be ideal for me. That would give me a lot of inventory. But everybody, uh, but you're not there yet, so you don't need the flash freezer or it's flat flash freezer, blast freezer, hardening cabinet. Three three terms for the same thing. You just don't need it now. Uh, a CB350 and two of these uh, $600 chest cabinets, uh, and you're in great shape. Uh, later on, when the VIN volume goes up and you okay, start selling to restaurants or other yeah, places, the you're going to wish you had double the production. And rather than run uh, you know, six of those, maybe you want to have a walk-in freezer. <laughs> but it's all based on money. If, if you are going to uh, start a moving company, you don't go out and buy a $200,000 tractor trailer. You start with a van and get some business and you work your way up. And when you call me up, I am more Thank than you. likely going to downsize you from what you think you need to buy. Uh, because it's more important, as Nike says, just do it. I don't want you thinking about this for two years. I want you to get into business and we're gonna make you very successful, uh, only, only based on one thing. We've been doing this for a long time. We know what we're doing. And, and my company, uh, we're not hiring people that are going to use this company as a stepping stone. When we hire someone, they stay with us for 20, 30 years. So you're going to get and nobody's on commission. You're going to get people who are going to do what's best for you. And, and, and you want to do what's best for you. Spend as little money as possible and as you need more stuff. Jeff went from a CB350 to a 24 quart. I don't know. He, maybe he could have afforded the 24 at the time, but he had other no expenses. No way. All right, he couldn't afford it. So. Either he would have stayed out of business and it would have been a pipe dream, or he got into business and then when the need was there, he had the money, the wherewithal to buy the bigger machine. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, hold this or push it while I load the vanilla. All right. This is working very well. Um, am I blocking all the cameras? Mike, can you see us? Hello, Mike. <laughs> Okay. Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Enterprise to Mike. <laughs> All right, save me some for the other one. Yeah. Oh, this looks great. Yeah, it does. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. We've got Jeff's two flavors. And normally, oh, you have it already. Wow. What? And now I'm just going to wiggle this out. Oh, you don't have... Okay. We I thought we'd fold. freeze it a little. You don't no. have to. Okay. Hold on. You could also put okay. a little vegetable oil on this. But oh. for the most part... There we go. There you go. Look at that, huh? Wow. Wow. First time. First time. So let's get a good look at this. There. Isn't that nice? So... Of course, you scoop between the two. You start on one side and scoop <laughs> the other. Is that in the manual? 
uh, no, but you know, you're, you're not going to scoop one and put it in the bowl and then the other. Should and then we mix it uh, actually do that now, or, or let it set up? Let's do it now. Okay. We'll let this set okay. up. Okay. This is taste very that. Cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's give it a shot. Which should we do guy. from this or this? Let's do it from the big okay. one. Okay. I'll take this out too. That's the kind of guy you are. What? Go, go big. For the, yeah, go big. Go big. Okay, I guess uh, if you come up, you can try this. This is just straight vanilla? Well, it's straight vanilla with a tinge of orange in it. Ah. Uh -huh. um, you know what, Tim? Let's put the uh, this back, all right? Let's make sure it's good first, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we ready? Well, that works so well. Let's try this. What do you want to do? I'm going to shake this one out. Okay. So look at that. <laughs> and the scooping, look, you get a little, look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It is. This is great. Oh, it's a wonderful This thing. is great. Yeah, Who invented this? You? No, some Italians with cardboard invented it. Okay, this is this is genius. Look at that, look at, Christy. Look at this over here. Of course it worked. Oh, ye of little faith. Real orange sherbet. I'm <laughs> I'm as amazed up, as you were. I come up with that little device, FYI. You came up with it? Yeah. Really? She also invented the internet. <laughs> oh, hey, the one for this tub I did. All right, it's all yours. I, I believe you, you did. Here. That's plenty. Thank you. I got to get some to Mike. And, and take so that. You did it. Have take this. To divide it. Okay. You I'll wait for this tub, too. I made a variegate. <laughs> That's what I used to do. This is great, though. Look at that. I think we'll put... Hmm. Or I can do half in those little tubs just like that. Mm -hmm. You want me to do that? Mm -hmm. Do you want it to freeze for a little while? Put in, the, put in your deep freeze for an hour. And then the it, it'll, what are we doing? This much. Okay. But I'm going to half it up to make it just pretty like that in those little tubs Steve's got. Have you seen those little tubs Steve got? Not yet. He I told me about them. Those things. Haven't seen them yet. Right. Now, when it gets, time. when you're done with the middle, you just do that. Creamsicle. Mm. Orange, First orange time. and vanilla. First time. I like it. Uh, you sell those dividers? Of course. How much? I don't know. Okay, good idea. About 55. Crystal. Uh, Christy. About 55. And then the rainbow divider, the rainbow maker, it's around 95. We have uh, Christy and Crystal, the Thompson twins. Yeah. Uh, two sisters from different mothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sound exactly the same on the phone. So yeah, so you can't tell them apart. All the time. How about some questions? You. So do you dip cream on this? Uh, I would dip it. It's a good question. I would dip it at ice cream temperatures. But um, let's see. I, I want to use this table. But if you can see this on the camera, uh, there are different uh, uh, a cabinet set at, say, uh, six degrees is not evenly six degrees. If this is my dipping cabinet and I'm scooping from here, we have, they have, when they make them, uh, aluminum tubing running around the outside, several loops of it. We use copper, aluminum wears out in a short number of years, copper is forever. But they're aluminum and it's running all around the outside. So if, if I'm standing here at my dipping cabinet, it's six degrees, let's say. Over here, because this tub here is getting refrigeration right here. This corner here, this tub is maybe four degrees because it's getting refrigeration here and here. So you take your uh, warmer scooping flavors. Anything with a high sugar content is gonna scoop softer. So you would put your lavender over here and your vanilla over here. Now they're both, they're in different temperatures in the same cabinet, but the lavender tends to run soft uh, it's going to scoop exactly the same. If you go into an ice cream parlor and you see the server struggling to scoop a certain flavor, they don't know that trick. The management doesn't know that trick. The corners are colder than the center. 
So it's all 6 degrees, or it's all 10 degrees, or it's all 16 degrees, but you move them around based on the sugar content. Anybody want any more before we put it away? This was great. Really? I'm going to try a taste. Let me give you one. No, I'll just, I'll just uh, hit both of them. Okay. He says Questions? No. Yes. What temperature does the product come out of the uh, machine? It depends on the product you're making. It can any, be anywhere from 23 down to uh, 19. What's the difference, um, say, ice cream versus sugar, sugar content? Ice? Italian ice is going to come out uh, at a colder temperature because of the higher sugar content we run it longer. It's just not critical. Uh, but it, you know, it, it, it's, it's like Paula with the baking. She doesn't know what temperature that pie is, or that cake is. She just knows that she puts the fork in and it doesn't stick, it's ready. And we look at it and say, if it isn't running out very soupy, um, it's fine. Jeff and I pull at different temperatures. Excuse Jeff me? pulls warmer than I do. Uh, so there is no wrong there. I'm not going huh? to spill. I've made it this far. But I do need a paper towel. Or I need something to put this in. Perfect. OK, we'll get going again. I, I was overhearing something that Jeff was saying. Uh, how many of you uh, folks know the word chutzpah? Uh, chutzpah is a, is a New York colloquial term. It means that you've got you know, real guts or you're, nothing can stop you. I think it's I, a Yiddish term. It is a Yiddish term. And I just want you to know this man's got chutzpah. He opened up with, tell me, how many square feet? 57. 57 square feet in a building. Now, that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's hardly from here to there. But he opened up in a gymnasium. Everybody was uh, exercising, you know, the, the, with the weights and the, the walking and the whole works. And he's an ice cream parlor in the middle of a gymnasium. It was the only place he could get. And so after these big workouts, they'd all come and buy his ice cream. Well, yeah. actually, no. They didn't buy I No customers came from the gym. Now why? Because no, they're there to work it off. <laughs> My story sounds better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's what I'm doing here. Uh, let me get some things to show you. I'm making a dairy-free ice cream. Yes. Now, that's kind of an oxymoron, uh, but ahead, as we discussed, talk. ice cream is... He's not is saying anything important anyway. Sure he is. Is there a particular recommended temperature of the airspace in the room in which this machine is occupied? No. It's too cold for you. It's no, perfect. no, no. I hear you. Uh, seriously. No. So this could work in a hot kitchen. We are from uh, Dubai to uh, South Africa to Alaska to uh, Peru or every place in the world. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter because you're not letting it sit out for a long time and the machines are designed to take it. Uh, we're used to building for restaurants which are notorious for not air conditioning their kitchens for the employees. They're hot. They're beyond hot. And uh, that's what we build our machines to do. Um, a millennial phenomenon. I am. A, I have four millennial children, and millennial. I'm talking in generalized terms. It doesn't mean everybody's this way, uh, but in general, millennials are defined as 21 to 39, and just like us baby boomers, those numbers will spread. Uh, people wanted to become baby boomers, so uh, I'm at the very young end of the baby boomers. Uh, Je Je uh, Jeff's at the more advanced end, and. and <laughs> People want to be, wanted to be a baby boomer. So people younger than me, I, mean, I was born 51, people who are in their uh, 60, 1960s are claiming they're baby boomers. They're not, but we'll let them in anyway. But the point is those, that's a moving target. And that moving target has changed the face of food unlike anything else in the world. We used to make, I don't even have them anymore, but we used to have cans uh, it's called a number 10 tin. It's a can, and it holds three quarts. So if I'm making strawberry ice cream 10 years ago, as, soon as, as early as 10 years ago, I would open up that number 10 tin. It would have the cheapest strawberries in the world in it that couldn't be sold anywhere else to anybody else, put in heavy corn syrup with red dye 40, and we poured that into the machine with the dairy blend and called that strawberry ice cream. And all us baby boomers ate it, and we loved it. It was great ice cream. Thanks. The millennials come along, and they just say, no, we're, we're not doing this. Uh, we are going to spend what it costs to get the best food and beverage uh, that there is. And, and that took a lot of us by surprise. Uh, not me, because I raised four children, but everybody else in the industry is still catching up to me. Uh, 
Um, and, and, and the big thing that changed was as the demand for the quality went up, uh, things like locally sourced and, and fresh or fresh frozen as opposed to in a can that's been in, that has a, a date uh, 10 years out. Uh, they are demanding fresher, better products. And uh, what came along with that, much to our very pleasant surprise, is 10 years ago, it was hard to get $2.50 for a scoop of ice cream because everybody said, oh, no, no, if you go up to 275, uh, nobody's going to come to you. They're not going to buy you. They'll go to your competition. The millennials uh, wanting better quality drove the prices up. Um, uh, my customers, haagen and Ben & Jerry, they get about $5.50 for a pint of ice cream, and it's, it's darn good. My customers like you are getting seven, eight, nine, ten dollars $10 a pint because the millennials don't look at it from a price standpoint. They look at it from, this is the quality I want. And, and I love it because instead of saying, I'll eat whatever comes along, it's, I'm just not going to eat that unless I know where the origins of it. Um, so that has brought up the quality of our products tremendously. It's also brought up our prices, which is wonderful. We are now much more profitable, we uh, ice cream makers, ice cream stores, uh, than we ever used to be. And the demand is way up because the quality is so good. Now, along all that, my children were raised on haagen and Ben and & Jerry, so if I have them over for Christmas dinner, they'll eat the haagen ice cream. But in their own freezers in, in Denver and in New York, in New York City, they probably have a product that used to be called vegan. And if you've watched my videos, you've heard this line from me, but it's, it's poignant. Uh, vegan sounds like an 89-year-old man who weighs 89 pounds, and you just want to buy him a good filly mignon before he collapses. Um, and, and that's the truth. It's a, it's a bad term. Vegan is not good. Just like our term, mix, ice cream mix, is a terrible term. It should be called blend. So the millennials are looking for something that's non-dairy uh, besides being highest quality. So I started working on this about three years ago, and, and the industry is caught up and everybody's moving this way. Not only are we making uh, incredible quality dairy ice cream, we're also making, and we changed the name to dairy-free frozen dessert. In my ice cream parlors, my customers like you, we call it dairy-free ice cream. Uh, if you're Briars, it has to be dairy-free frozen dessert. If you're a college, it's dairy-free frozen dessert. If, you're, uh, if Jeff ever put it in, if it was Jeff's ice cream, it would be called dairy-free ice cream. Very descriptive term, and I can assure you they're not going to come with two black Chevy Suburbans and haul you off to Yemen to a black site because you know, you're breaking a federal law almost as bad as ripping that tag off of your pillow. You know, it's, it's right up there, right up there with it. So what I'm making is I, I experimented a lot using coconut milk, uh, cream of coconut, you know, it comes in a can, and if you were down in Key West, you'd have it in a bar drink. Uh, coconut milk, cream of coconut, sugar, and, uh, that's, and then my flavor. This company is called Froconut, and you'll see it on the website. It's under Key Suppliers, F-R-O-C-O-N-U-T. And Amy Posner came up with this. She's here in the United States, and this is all made in the United States. And this is all vegan cane sugar, non-GMO coconut, uh, food starch, and tapioca. And that's about it. And uh, my product from scratch tended to get icy and, and crumbly. Uh, it needs more research. This is just such an easy way to make the dairy free that I recommend I get, I don't get a dime from them. I don't even get the product for free. But I love it because it's got all the ingredients in it. It's a coconut based. Uh, and I can make any flavor of ice cream that can exist, except vanilla. Uh, the vanilla, for some reason, you've got the coconut background, which is not terribly strong, but fighting with the vanilla, vanilla for world dominance. And so I don't like that my vanilla, but I do coffee. I do, we're going to do chocolate. I do uh, strawberry, uh, cookie ice creams, uh, banana ice creams. Anything that I can make in dairy, I can make in dairy free. Now, no one is going to open up a dairy free store. And I've been saying that, and now there are some dairy-free stores only opening up. But for the most part, if I could get you in your store, if you had, say, 16 flavors, give me two or four slots of dairy-free and see the crowd that's coming in. Us baby boomers uh, are going to buy the hard ice cream, uh, but the millennials are going to come in. 
And it's, I don't have my phone on me, but the, the whole world has changed because of them. If I was giving this talk 10 years ago, I would be quoting um, the, the guy from McDonald's, Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc said this key to success is location, location, location. That's out the window now. You don't have to be on Park Avenue uh, in Winter Park, Florida to have the, the most expensive street to have the best location. Because nowadays, a millennial says, oh, hey, Steve Thompson's ice cream parlor has dairy free. Really, text me the address. She texts it, uh, I text it to her. She texts it to 10 of her friends who text it to 10 of their friends. Before this class is over today, there'll be two to 300 people know that Steve Thompson on a side street in Winter Park, Florida has dairy free ice cream. It's amazing. There's another, some of you uh, more senior gentlemen uh, will understand this one is uh, my older, my much older sister. She's uh, two years older than me, way older than me. She tells me that as you get older, it's hard to digest dairy. It's high, hard to digest beef. Beef stays in your gut for about 72 hours. It can be uncomfortable. That's a fact of getting older, and you millennials will get there someday. Uh, so the, another target market that nobody's going after is you give a taste of this to someone who walked in and bought haagen just say, hey, just take a taste of this to take home. And they'll be amazed how good it tastes. And then when they buy it in pints and take it home, they're going to say, wow, this stuff isn't wrecking my stomach. I mean, I can eat this all day long. So I think that not only are we going to have the millennial age group, 85 million, we're going to get the 72 million baby boomers also. And, and uh, so that's what we're going to make now. So I have already pre-mixed. Uh, the Froco Nut with water, so this is a coconut based product. I've added uh, a chocolate that I like, Benjamin P. Forbes, Forbes Chocolate. It's at my website. And uh, they're uh, also about 115 years old, like, uh, like we are. They're a few years younger. And uh, just a great chocolate company based in Cleveland. So I mix those two together, and you're going to try it, and you're going to find the texture is not as smooth as dairy, but you're going to find it appealing, and you're going to say, wow, I didn't even know that was dairy-free. So let me get this going. And I want to measure this out, Jeff, because I think I have a little more than I need. What do you need? Uh, something you I need? can measure four quarts. Right here, four it's quarts. Be right to the top. No, not to the top. OK. Any questions so far? Yes? What's the formula for mixing? Uh, oh, it's easy. It's one pound of the powder to one quart of water. <coughs> Couldn't be easier. On their directions, it's in grams and, and kilograms and all those other good things, which I can't understand. I'm going to put it a little short. Do you hand stir it or do you have to drill stir You can hand you stir it. But I, uh, that's what I use, but I also have a... Uh, uh, Jeff's got the electric drill with the paint mixer on it. I have a $400 <laughs> Sunbeam blender. His works better. So I have pre-mixed this, and I check the gate is closed. And I'm going to pour this in. Now, if I have any lumps or bumps, the machine will blend it up, because I see a couple of lumps. Not a problem. Now, this is along the lines of an Italian ice. It's, it's, um, it's not dairy in it, but it's sugar and uh, coconut. And so it's going to freeze time-wise longer than ice cream. So I'm going to hit uh, home here, make ice cream. I'm going to go to dairy-free and start. And then, unlike Jeff, he likes to continue talking for a while and tell you about the three guys in the bar, I go ahead and hit the refrigeration switch. I'm, I want to get back to my Barca lounger and relax. So You old people like those Barca lounges. Yes, so. we do. <laughs> I've got one with the uh, heating and massage factor. And, and then there's another button that calls the chiropractor. Uh, yes? Um, instead of using the blenders to mix up your bucket of stuff, that, whatever variety that you're making, you could just use the machine to do your blending? Hello. Yes, you can. Yeah, you definitely can, except for the sugar. Uh, if I'm making Italian ice, I don't put sugar in the machine. It's going to wear the blades. Instead of six years, you might get four and a half years. See, and I don't care because I know who makes the blades, and I won't pay for them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll pay one way or the other. I knew that. <laughs> Your car's out front. If, uh, if you want to leave without, you know, 
punctures in it. What do you want to do with that? Yeah. I'll, I'll refrigerate it. Yeah, well, you can freeze it, actually. Yeah. No dairy in it or anything. I'm, I'm just going to put it away. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, it is. And it's, its first ingredient is coconut. Yes? What speed are you running? Uh, home, um, dairy free, I think, is slightly lower than, um, than the super premium. Uh, because even though there's no dairy in it, uh, water expands uh, 17%. You know, if you have a, a wood boat and it's up on Lake Michigan and you leave it there for the winter, your boat's going to be crushed because water expands. So when someone says there's no air in their ice cream, they don't know what they're talking about because basic physics is 17%. And then you translate that into our term overrun, and that becomes 34% uh, overrun. So the lowest overrun you can really go in life is about 34% because water expands, oh, unless you put the whole system under pressure and there's no reason to do that. You can go overboard on everything. haagen again, a company, Reuben Madison, his mother, we put in business, and they also opened up eventually ice cream parlors, and eventually they all closed, because haagen knows what they're doing. It's sold in pint containers, and you pick at it. On the drive home, uh, ladies, you don't know this, but on the drive home, there are teeth marks in the pint of ice cream. And then we smooth it over, and then we look and say, oh, there's a divot. So what we do is as soon as we get home, we quickly open it while Paul is unwrapping the rest of the groceries. I dig into it and take a bite so nobody ever knows. Uh, and then we have some for dinner, and then we have some at 11 o'clock at night, a couple of spoonfuls. So you're picking at it, you're not getting a lot of product. Uh, if you got a portion of haagen the size of Jeff's uh, portions at his store, first off, being dense, it would be like nuclear waste. It would be very, very, very dense. So it would look small and like you didn't get your money's worth. It would also sit like lead in your stomach. It's a great ice cream to pick at. It's not a great ice cream to go on a cone. So those stores went out of business because people ate it and they said, they didn't say, uh, oh, that ice cream upset my stomach because it's so incredibly dense. They said, oh, haagen ice cream upsets my stomach, therefore I'm not going to buy haagen -Dazs. And all their stores went out of business. So did most of the Ben & Jerry's. Um, but they do know what they're doing at haagen -Dazs. They're selling in pint containers, and in the old days, your ice cream parlor would have had pints, quarts, half gallons, and gallons. I was teaching at Penn State University. I asked the head of Penn State, why does my customer, haagen and Ben & Jerry, why are they only sold in pints? He said, because you'll pay $7 for a pint without even blinking, but you won't pay $28 for a half gallon. And he's absolutely right. At $28, I'm going to keep it for myself and my friends can eat briars, uh, or I'm just not going to spend the money. But at $7, I'm going to buy mint chip for me, and I better bring home a coconut for Paula or I'll be sleeping in the garage. So you spend $14 and don't even think about it. The other thing I do uh, in selling pints, because I think it's really important, um, I have a love-hate relationship with Starbucks at Tampa International Airport. I'm going through there about 5 in the morning, and I just want a black coffee, and they have a lineup of 30 people getting a mocha, latte, this and that. I can't even pronounce what's in it, and I don't know what's in it. Why can't you just have a line for coffee? And then I can put my own junk in it. I can put all my milk in it and all my Splenda and really junk it up the way I want. So I thought, same thing with an ice cream parlor. You go into an ice cream parlor, and there's a line of 10 people, and you say, wow, that's great. It must be really good stuff. But it's Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock, and I just want to, I've been told to pick up a, a dessert for tonight. We're having uh, uh, the Smiths over, and uh, I just want to do my job, get my ice cream and get home. So I come into your store, and there's the server. The server is scooping ice cream, and people are deciding what that, like that, and that's the line. And here's a line over here, no line, just a little sign, and it's got a, a, a vertical uh, freezer with glass doors. Uh, if you go to Culver's, that's what they do. You, you open it up and you pick out your mint chip and your coconut, and you put it on the counter, and there's nobody there. But the server over here says to the crowd, excuse me one second, server comes over here, uh, and it, now it's like Starbucks. Uh, uh, Put your credit card in the machine. Okay, do you want a bag? No. You want a receipt? No. I grab my two pints and I am gone. The crowd over here that got interrupted says, 
Whoa, look at that guy. He just came in and out here. His car's running, his golden retriever's in the back seat. And he came in and out in 45 seconds on Friday afternoon at 5.30. I could do that myself on the way home from work. So you don't even need someone here. You just need the ability to just make it so simple that they pick up the product and go. And you'll, you'll be amazed at the sales. Dairy free and pint sales are the two biggest trends that are happening in our industry right now. And they're not fads. I don't deal in fads. Questions? Wow, I put them all asleep. I you see got a joke? Eyes are glazed over. You got a joke? <laughs> How about the three guys in the barn? No, three guys can't, tell can't tell that one. Yeah, we'd have to tell them to shut off the phone. You want to talk about butterfat? I want to talk about butterfat. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get a little butterfat around the waist. Is that what you mean? Well, no. for an old guy. He want, <laughs> uh, butterfat content. Um, what were we? How were we, was that question asked? Yeah, what did you say? I had said that I read a lot that says you know real gourmet ice cream is in that 14 to 16 percent butterfat. Right. But, you know Jeff was making stuff the other day with 10 percent and it was fantastic. So I was asking, what's your opinion on butterfat levels? Well, I'm from New York, so I have an opinion on everything. You know, whether you want it or not. But we came down here, and, and New York, all of New England, is just loaded with ice cream parlors. I've got more machines there, except maybe more in California. And uh, you come down here, and there aren't that many ice cream parlors. There's Jeff's up in uh, uh, Fruit Loops. <laughs> there's uh, there's a, a, a great guy down in uh, Lauderdale. Uh, there's one in Tampa. There just aren't that many ice cream parlors. And the reason is because of us New Yorkers and, and New Englanders. We come down with our uh, high fat concept of ice cream. If, if you have a store in New York and you're selling 14% butter fat, I'm gonna sell 16, just so I can say I'm the richest ice cream in New York. No other reason, 16 isn't that much better. I just want the bragging rights. So you come down with that attitude and all of a sudden you find out it's, a, it's 95 degrees uh, during the day, 100% humidity, and you eat that high fat ice cream or you eat that Ruth Chris steak, and all of a sudden you're dropping dead in the parking lot. <laughs> that's lousy for business, having dead people in the parking lot. So uh, that's what all my customers were doing. So I said, let's lower the fat content. The federal minimum to call it ice cream is 10%. So I said, let's try 10% and, and, and boost the flavor. Because nobody eats fat content, like I said at the beginning of today, and nobody eats uh, air content. They eat flavor. So we took 10% mix and added a lot more flavor, and wow, we had a great, refreshing eating ice cream. So when people ask me what butter fat should I run, and they say they're from Wisconsin, I say 12 or 14. It's colder up there. It's, it's uh, what they're used to. Uh, if it's uh, Southern California, uh, they can't make up their mind. They have to sit there and share the experience with some other people. But uh, <laughs> it depends on where you are. So in Texas uh, and Florida, Louisiana, I'm going to run the low fat. As I get north of the Mason-Dixon line, I'm going to run the higher fat. So there is no set answer. You walk around and you, you, you look at what other people are doing. Is there a difference in the taste? There can be, but not with ours. Okay, this is ready. Um, spatula. Here, I got it. No, oh, here, use this. All right, you ready? Get used to it. Here we go. Now, I'm going to speed this up just to help get the rest of it out. <coughs> And again, this has no dairy in it. Yes? Uh, Jeff asked you the question of, uh, is there a difference in taste? And you said that there can be. Um, why is that? Uh, in other words, the higher, the, the, so like the difference between a, um, a, a uh, London broil and a filet mignon. Correct. The higher the fat content, right. the richer it is. Rich is not a taste. Rich is just a, a feeling. And if something's too greasy, you know, the old adage, too much is never enough, is not always correct. You can go overboard, uh, but people in general have not been putting enough flavor in. When I grew up, um, I always ask people, it's a great question to ask with your business. You'll have a lot of fun with it. Ask them, when they were growing up, where'd you go to get ice cream? And everybody's going to smile. They're going to have a, a big smile on their face. Oh, good one. As they remember okay. uh, where they went for ice cream. 
I didn't have those happy memories. I mean, I had a happy, I had a happy childhood, <laughs> but I didn't have those happy memories because Dad and Aww. Emery, uh, Dad and Emery Thompson Jr., no, otherwise known as Uncle June, Dad and Uncle June's idea of making ice cream was, let's put it into a batch freezer and it takes eight minutes. Let's run it for an hour and a half and see what breaks. And that's what they did. They would just overturn it until the machine locked up. It used to be a chain motorcycle chain in those days running the machine. And then they'd bring us home to us. It was us kids. It was vanilla, and it was overturned. It was disgusting. We used to give it to Ted Arthur, the, uh, the, the, the drunk next door. And uh, Ted was a wonderful man. God bless him. Uh, but he was the only one who would eat it. So our idea of great ice cream was going out to Baskin Robbins. You know, ugh. I mean, we're in the ice cream business. We're going to Baskin Robbins. But Baskin Robbins does it right. It's a, they're doing a low-fat mix because it's cheap. But they counteract it with a lot of flavor. When you order a raspberry cone from Baskin Robbins, you know it's raspberry. And I always tell people, if, if you say, wow, that pink ice cream is delicious, what is it? And you don't know that it's red raspberry instead of strawberry. I just failed as an ice cream maker because you can't, I didn't put enough flavor in. Come up and try this uh -huh. and see what you think. It's, it's dairy-free chocolate. Who is this mythical Mike that you keep bringing a second I don't portion to? Know. I think you're taking it back to your office. <laughs> now, I did this formula mathematically, so I have no idea how it tastes. So there is a setting, a non dairy setting. Yes, there you? is. Yeah. We got a setting just, for everything. I just recall <laughs> seeing that. I, you tell me, did I give out the formula? I didn't give out the formula? No. I, you, I was probably, I, I could have been talking during oh. the chocolate part. Oh, well, anyway, I, I thought I had printed them out. Yeah, here it is. It's uh, three quarters, no, that's lavender. It's three quarters of a pound of cocoa, of chocolate. Three quarters of a pound. But I said my formula was mathematical. Let me just show you. Here's a bag of Forbes chocolate. Let me take it over to the camera. So the instructions on here are three pounds of uh, chocolate to five gallons of mix. Well, I'm, not, I'm only using four quarts of mix. So I divide it in half, then I divide it in half again, then I divide it in half again, and that's how I came up with the one half to three quarters of a pound. Okay. So it's very mathematical. Very simple. Yeah, mm -hmm. Benjamin P. Forbes. How is it? I haven't tasted it. You haven't tasted it. It was done by science. How's everybody like it? Mm. And it's dairy free. Where's the bag? What? Where do you have the bag for the mix? Somewhere. I would like to see what I'm The coconut really comes through. Yeah, I will. Now, other. Briars is experimenting with um, cashew nuts uh, for dairy free, and there's another one I can't remember. Almonds is another one. To me, they both taste like eating the Sahara Desert. Every bite you take makes you more and more thirsty. I think the coconut is perfect. Yeah, because it's coconut. So it's there, but uh, again, it's, it's one of these deals where whether you like it or not isn't really important. Uh, you're turning away 85 million people. Or as I told, my, I got some old timer, old time stores, been in business 60, 70 years and still running their Emory Thompson, 70 years old, breaks my heart. And I call them up and I just, you know, trying to make a sale of a new machine. And I say, you got to try this stuff, it's great. And I, I was shocked by the answer I got. I got, um, oh, I don't, I, I'm not putting that stuff in. You don't understand. We've been here 70 years. We've got a big clientele, and uh, we don't need this fad. And I say, well, yes, you do, because number one, it's not a fad. It is a trend. This is going to be around forever. And, if, and when was the last time you saw someone in their early 30s or late 20s come into your store? 
well, I don't know, I'm sure there was one somewhere coming in with her grandmother. I go, well, you're making my point. You're missing the largest buying group that ever existed. They're not even walking through the door. And, and guess what? Your millennial, your, your baby boomers, we're not going to be here forever. We think we are, but we're not going to be here forever. So you better have another age group that you can sell to coming up. It doesn't mean abandoned dairy ice cream. It does mean uh, add this product to it because the market is so big and in, in such demand. And it's like pulling teeth to get people to put it in. One guy called up and he said, boy, that's the last time I ever listened to you, Steve Thompson. Uh, I put in the dairy free. I said, why? It didn't go well? He said, no, I put in two flavors like you said. I should have put in six. They practically stormed the store. I had so many customers. And I said, well, a nice problem to have. And I'm hearing this over and over and over again. And just like people want to make up their own dairy blend, people try to make up their own dairy free. And it can be done, but it uh, never comes out as good as being done by someone who specializes in it. I'm sure you could build a batch freezer, but you can't do it as well as me. Yes? My supplier that I get my blend from also does a dairy free blend. I would try it. It's good. OK, then, then you're all set. That's great. In the back. Do you use the same chocolate mix for just with your vanilla to make a regular chocolate ice cream? Not yes. Dairy -free. Oh, yeah. So this is the same chocolate. Uh, yeah, I just chocolate. wanted you to try a different chocolate. Jeff uses a Giadelli, and he uses a uh, Berry Calibo. Berry Calibo. And they're excellent. The, these are all uh, a, a way high cut above, uh, say, Hershey syrup, which I also use. Uh, when I make coffee ice cream, uh, I use ta uh, Taster's Choice freeze-dried crystals. I'm a coffee snob. Um, I, I, I go over to, over to Sumatra and pick out my beans from the tree and bring them back. Not really. <laughs> and uh, I grind my own coffee, and I, I love coffee. Um, but when it comes to making coffee ice cream, uh, that horrible Taster's Choice freeze-dried crystals, which is the worst cup of coffee on earth, is the best co for coffee ice cream. This is the best. Yeah, it's an, unbelievable. Folgers, same idea. Um, but it's got an aftertaste. It's got a little bitter taste. So you add three or four squirts of Hershey syrup, and it takes it. You'll never taste the chocolate, but you'll taste. Uh, it takes away the bitterness. So even lowly old Hershey syrup has its place in the world. Yes. All so dairy free mixes made with the coconut blend. No. With the coconut. Not dairy mixes. No. No, the dairy free. Dairy free. No, you can use uh, cashew. You can use soy, which is really in disfavor. Uh, you can use almond. I don't like them as much. This company makes all three. I prefer the coconut, and that's just my personal taste. But I, I love this. I think this is great. And it leaves you wanting more. The only thing I would do with this is maybe I would have cut back a little bit on the chocolate. It's, it's, it's really intense, but then I'm not a, uh, my wife is the chocolate person in the family. Anybody else? Let's see where we are, Jeff. Uh, 11 o'clock? Yeah, I see that. Do you want to do the Q&A and then we'll have break, uh, lunch? You're, what time is it? It's 11. We'll, we'll do the Q&A for about 20 minutes and then we'll have lunch. Okay, but uh, I still have two. Yeah, I have one. Right, so you want me to make one before lunch? Yeah, go ahead. A quick one. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's what we say on Long Island. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. It's much faster than saying go ahead. It's just go ahead. All right. Uh, what I'm measuring out here is, is one of the secret ingredients in ice creams that I make. It's Giadelli sweet ground chocolate. Sounds good. It's very good. <coughs> I do. All right. We uh, yes, uh, Monday, Monday in class, we we in, we were playing around and we came up with something that I thought was absolutely great. It was a uh, coffee amaretto chip, and uh, I thought it was so good that we, we didn't write it down. But we'll try to make it anyway here, uh, and then I will write it down. Uh, I've got my little cards. So uh, it is a cream ice that uh, you will feel is ice cream. It'll taste just like, right? It tastes like ice cream. So we'll start with our basic cream ice formula, which is what? Three, two, one. Three, two, one. 
So because we're doubling it, it becomes... 642. Hey, oh, she's sharp. 642. Be, I'm, the only reason I'm doubling it is because I know that if it comes out as good, they're all going to want it out in the plant. Uh, and you'll all eat much more than you did of the other stuff. So we'll put in six quarts of water. That's all right. Okay, six quarts of water and a little more. What do you need? Nothing. Okay. And four. We'll edit him out. And four pounds of sugar. Tell me, I won't look, is Steve cringing right now? No, but the engineers on the floor are just screaming. Uh, larger funnel uh, for the machine. You'll, you'll do fine with this one. Okay. <laughs> we don't do custom work. <laughs> we can get you flames on the side of your car if you like, though. <laughs> Which is the machine we're going to sign and, and auction off? Oh, yeah, we'll do that sometime. All yeah. right, so we've got uh, three, two. Yeah. Now we need uh, how many of these? Okay. Ooh. You can come work in my store anytime. Who cleans your machine, Dr. I do. <laughs> he doesn't. I do. I did once. <laughs> once. It's just not that hard. I'm switching flavors now. Uh, Normally, it would make chocolate at the end of the day. I mean, lighter down to darker. Thousand dollar tip for free. Buy a spaghetti colander. If you're working with anything with pieces, a few little pieces will be left in. But if you have a little few pieces from this batch and another batch and another batch, pretty soon your drains clog. If you pour all your water through a spaghetti colander, it's going to catch everything and it doesn't go down your drain. All right. Now, does anybody remember how much coffee we used? I thought we used one of those and we made... An eighth? Quarter. Quarter cup. So we're going to use a half cup because we're doubling the batch, right? I hope so. How many ounces? Not you worry. No, I was just going to tell you if it fell within my range. All right, we'll see. And now we'll add, we're gonna, we added a little chocolate powder to it, as I recall, your suggestion. <laughs> True. This is the, similar to sweetened cocoa, but it's infinitely better. A quart. And then we'll add a little uh, amaretto. A You're making a half batch, aren't you? What? You're making a half batch? No, full batch. Okay. Wow, a little amaretto. 
And that's everything, right? That was a full bottle. No. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, this much left in there when I put it in. Weren't you watching? Now we'll see if it's uh, as we remember. Then we'll add chips. And I won't shortchange the chips this time. <laughs> oh, look, you opened the button, huh? No, it's been that way. Oh, okay. Next, I'm going to get a microphone and sing. Now I see why he shorted my lavender on chips. He wanted them for his ice cream. No, these are what's left over. Okay, I think it's good. By the way, before what I did was I took the chips because uh, I couldn't find mini chips. I usually keep both, mini and regular chips. But I felt these were too big when we made it at the store. So I threw them in the Ninja and I ground them up a little bit. I'm not sure if we don't need a little more coffee. I think a little more coffee would do it. What Alfred E. Newman said. Me what? Me worry? So now, who's, who's writing this down? Nobody? Good. What do we got? We added another... Well, we add an eighth. An eighth. So we had... A half and an eighth, correct. What? Can I turn it on? Turn one on. The this? Refrigeration. Okay, we're ready. <laughs> that, that sticks right in your craw. A, a little tip. In freezing ice cream, nothing happens for about <laughs> the first four minutes. You're reducing the temperature. So once I put that mix in, I could, spend, I could turn on the refrigeration, get the process going, and add all these ingredients that he put in, and they're all going to mix beautifully, but I'm already four minutes into my eight-minute batch. So uh, you can save a lot of time by uh, just get that refrigeration going and put everything else in. To me, it's all about saving time. Um, you don't want to be stuck here all day making ice cream. You've got want to get back to that Barca lounger. Um, one thing uh, that hasn't come up today because we didn't do it in any of our flavors, but Jeff introduced me to uh, the Ninja Blender. They're about $99 and they could shred absolutely anything on earth. And Jeff taught me because my uh, Oreo cookie or my Heath candy bar or any of those were all coming out, you know, bleh, mushy. He takes uh, the Heath candy bars, freezes them in the freezer, and then adds them into the blender to grind them into a powder. Were right down, so where I had pieces of Heath candy bar, he had for every particle of dairy, he had a particle of Heath candy bar next to it. And you pour that into the machine, and then also you can add uh, pieces that you've cut up, uh, but add them frozen, and uh, makes great candy ice creams. Now you can see, just that's the second rinse and it's, it's virtually clear. I don't need to go any further. What, a little vanilla? What? Now is that vanilla sugar extra? Extra. He added vanilla too. Pure he vanilla. He poured vanilla right in. I've got some Heinz ketchup if you want to throw it in too. Okay, you got it? <laughs> as long as it's brown, uh, brown, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. You can see how you could end up pouring everything all over the floor. 
because the last thing I did was drain out all that water and then maybe I don't come back for 10 or 15 minutes and I've forgotten, that gate's open. Close the gate. Or in this one, push down the handle. Otherwise it'll be all over the floor. After this, we're gonna do uh, something we call questions answered, where Jeff and I get to sit in comfortable chairs and answer your questions. So I sure hope you have some questions. Otherwise, Jeff and I are just gonna talk to ourselves. <laughs> How much vanilla do you What is it? How much vanilla? What's the formula? One ounce per quart. One ounce per quart. Eight ounce. Quart of anything. How do you know? Did you so we had six and four, we had about ten. <laughs> what? We were running six quarts of water and two quarts of ice cream. Right. So I put in eight ounces of But you also have the MRF. Eight ounces. No, I don't worry. Okay. It's, so we're looking at about six ounces of vanilla. Well I put I ounces put ounces in an eight. Okay. Exactly eight. <laughs> <laughs> I put in exactly eight ounces. I could do that. I could measure it right here blindfolded. Don't you remember my old trick where I'd say we're going to use 17 pounds of sugar and I'm pouring it in and then uh, I'm holding the bag and I look at it and I go, I learned this from a chef. Oh. And so I reach in and I grab about this much and put it in. Okay, it's good. And everybody's going, wow. I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. It just looked good. We go through a lot of spoons. You're not going to have this on. No. Is it good? Very good. Very good. What did we put Heath Bar in the other day? What? What was it? Raspberry Heath Bar chip. Raspberry Heath Bar chip. Is that what we made? Yeah. No. Yeah. Never make Heath Bar chip. It's one or the other. It wasn't this, was it? No. With Heath Bar? No. Pete? That's a little Raspberry Crunch. Raspberry Crunch. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, raspberry crunch it is. <laughs> okay. So save room after uh, after lunch for more ice cream. Whoa, that's a lot. Water, sugar, mix, coffee, chocolate powder, amaretto, Chocolate chips and they're perfect. Thanks. Because if this comes out good, it's a winner. I thought it came out great when we made it the other day. Absolutely great. Uh, who hasn't had uh, what's called cream ice before? Oh, don't be afraid. Raise your hand up. Who hasn't had cream ice? Okay. Because cream ice is a a wonderful hey Michael, you come product, for me. but it's, it's uh, the saleability factor is hard because if you open a store and put cream ice on the window, they're going to shut you down. They'll think you're selling uh, whatever. They just think you're Yeah. Ice cream, cream ice, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's like sherbet, but it's different. Um, boy, we should have made... Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I can make cream ice that tastes just like ice cream. Right? I mean, we made cream ice that was just... What did we make? We made chocolate... No, that was Italian ices. Uh, wasn't the raspberry... Yes. What? We made this. We made this, right, right. That's right.
Does anybody have a problem? I shouldn't say a problem with alcohol. <laughs> Is anybody not? Uh, anybody here from Utah? <laughs> okay, you can all taste this, right? Sorry, Utonians. You, what are they called? You, Utes. <laughs> They're Utes. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hear about this. Uh, Mike, we can get rid of that, can't we? Never. Oh, those two Utes. <laughs> so, what else? Who doesn't have a store yet? Who, do you have a location? All signed, sealed, and delivered? Signed by Friday. Oh, I wish I could talk to you before then. Oh, what? Uh, okay. What are you going to do? Um, I just do pop up shops and fresh markets. What did you say? So I do pop-up shops in fresh market. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Anybody see the movie Chef? Yeah. Cool. Cool. You should watch that movie. Chef. It's very funny. Two guys buy a panel van and gut it and decide they want to sell tacos. But they want to go cross country selling tacos. So their marketing method was genius. And uh, every town they went to, the people were expecting them, anticipating them, and they outfitted this truck with tacos. And they, they, it's a very cute movie. Not an Academy Award winner, but it's cute. Oh, we're getting there. stuff is great you know some stuff I'm not a big fan of what do you think of the lavender I like the lavender needed more chips of course but I like the lavender I'm real good at that kind of location. So because I was expecting to do I think I was surprised. Yeah, I mean, I No, no, that's okay. You know I don't want somebody to say that I'm really interested, but I'm not. That's right. No, I just, but I hear that. Which is why I turned down the other five. So, 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 I do think that the two Mike, this part's pretty boring, isn't it? I'm trying to follow you back and forth is keeping me away. No need, I have nothing to do, I'm bored. You want to start question and answers? Not yet, because then we have uh, no question and answers when we have the question and answer time. You're not going to walk in front of the camera again, are you? You got that, Mike? Uh, Got it. Okay. Almost. So how do we know when it's ready? <laughs> how do we know when it's ready, Pete? Right. Uh, you get that, Janet? How do we know when it's ready? When it holds the peak. Right. When it holds the peak. Right now. Close. Close.
By the way, if we're using 10% butter fat, this is one of your questions. If we're using 10% butter fat in the mix and we use two quarts of it and we use six quarts of water, how much butter fat is in the ice cream? Shoot, that's an obvious answer. Right, if we use two quarts of 10%, that's a trick question. It's still 10%. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Now, that's not to say that each serving is 10% because you've diluted it. But that's what your ice cream is, 10%. Okay, we ready? See? Man learns. Oh. Mike, how was that? <laughs> okay, uh, we'll have this and then we'll uh, sit down, get a little groggy and have lunch. Question and answers first. One minute, somebody time one minute. Janet, we'll give you a new spoon. I know, but I'm trying to be conservative. I have an environmental thing going on. Thank you, Ophelia. Thank you, Ophelia. We good? Pete, how much? Say when. Okay, let's try it. Eat that. Oh, well, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Look at all the
Yeah. yeah, really. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just have like half a cup? Thank you so much. please. What? Um, half, please. You're a kind sir. Perfect. Thank you, sir. I think those are great. Yeah. Mm. Minis work. Where's the cherry flavor? It's even smaller than minis. Amaretto. It's, it's, a, it's now a chip. I had a medium. It's a shaving. Yeah. <laughs> One got away. It, it's not very coffee. Coffee. Mmm. Would you make this? Mmm. <laughs> Uh, are you working mm. the rest of the day? Yeah, could you? Yes. Mmm. <laughs> 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 I'll do that right now. Well, uh, well, let's give Mike a bigger one. Okay. Just one more bottle. That's going to hurt. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you put alcohol in here? Uh, amaretto. A little bit. <laughs> That's for Mike. So what do you think? It's, it's good? More coffee. It's, it's very good. So when an ice cream store would put alcohol in this, what, would you get in trouble for doing that? <laughs> we went I mean, I don't know, we got kids. The only in. trouble you'll get into is how many times a week can I go to the bank? <laughs> That's not what I Kids cannot have it. Kids cannot have it. I think he said he cards adults. But, uh, what are you laughing really? at? No, he has an adult ice cream store. No, I don't. I have a regular ice cream store. We just serve adult ice cream to half the menu. But because the alcohol is an ingredient, there's no qualification why he doesn't have an alcohol ice cream store. I don't know. I just, I don't want to get involved. You're your shot. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't understand. I don't care. Can I, can I get by with selling this under a beer and wine license, or do I need a liquor license? You don't need any license. You don't need a license. It's an ingredient. I don't need any license to add liquor to... to no, ma'am. No, ma'am. an ingredient. Really? Okay, how do you want to do this? Years. I have that, that, and that. I got it. Uh, what are you going to do? What they, what they do the is... Or? I can use bourbon, whiskey, all that, add it to my mix if I want, and not have a liquor license. If you don't go overboard, I yeah. it's, a <laughs> it's a flavor. Yeah. Uh, in this machine, I use a pint. Uh, in in that machine, I would use a liter. Uh, max. Use a pint per batch in the three fifty. Maximum. Yeah. So when you break it down, it's not that much alcohol. I mean, unless you eat a three-gallon tub of ice cream, you're not even going to get high. Um, am I turned on, Mike? Yes. Hey, uh, um, we're going to answer some questions now, uh, but I did want to just touch on something that we were talking about up front here. Can you hear me? Guess not. Um, putting liquor into ice cream. Um, I have just one negative about it, and it goes back to a book that I read. It was called the. Uh, it was a novel uh, called the uh, Ice Queen of Brooklyn, and it was uh, actually fashioned after Tom Carvel. And uh, she'd been in business for a long time, and then her grandson said, we need to jazz up the business. Let's put liquor into our ice cream. So hesitantly, she agreed to it and put it in. And Jeff's model is completely different. I'm just saying this is not even a problem. It's just something to think about. Uh, this lady, who was supposed to be Tom Carvel, you know, lots of stores, puts liquor into her ice cream, advertises the heck out of it, and the sales went through the roof 
for a week. And then they fell off drastically, and he started, she started getting uh, hate mail and phone calls because I don't want my 13-year-old coming into your store and getting ice cream. And in the book, it's again, it's a novel, but they were talking about this was actually hurting the image of the hometown ice cream parlor. The hometown ice cream parlor is supposed to be someplace safe. You're selling ice cream. So for the little bit of, uh, we have a different opinion. He, he's a liquor store. Um, he is. Um, and that's why people go there. But uh, you do have to worry about that hometown image. And I think it's detrimental. I'd rather leave it to someone else. Now, the other big thing right now is, of course, CBD oil. Yeah. And everybody's putting every CBD into everything. The one problem there is I had some, a little bottle of CBD for about $90 imported from Colorado via New York down to here. And it's, I opened it, and 15 minutes later, Paula comes in. She's just been down at the Shell station uh, getting some chips and buying gas. And she says, hey, you know, they're selling CBD down there at the corner. <laughs> and the whole thing was my CBD, which was imported from different places around the country to get to me, was supposed to be the best quality. What kind of quality we know came from there. But I chose not to uh, put it in my ice creams or make, even make a video about it because I thought, I, I just don't trust this idea. I don't like the idea of, you know, maybe there's no, you don't get a buzz from it, but I don't like the idea of adding chemicals uh, that may have unknown uh, effect on people when I'm supposed to be the hometown ice cream parlor, everybody's smiley and happy, and I ignore him. Um, because you're the majority, he's the minority. And just all I say is, think about it. Do you really want to risk your reputation right from the start with alcohol. I have an ice cream parlor from 20 well, years ago. Let me finish and then you can. Uh, let me finish and then you can talk. I have one ice cream parlor that has been doing it for 20 years up in Milford, Connecticut, and they did one clever thing. Uh, ice cream with alcohol in it raise your, raises your cost, of course. So that's one problem. The other is I don't like, you know, how do you differentiate between uh, the family formulas and the liquor formulas? This guy put up a sign that said um, liquor ice creams. You must be of 21 years of age to buy this ice cream. And I said, how's that going for you? And he said, well, stay in the corner over there, Steve. I think you'll get a laugh. So school lets out. This uh, basketball player height 16-year-old comes in. Hi, I'd like to buy your liquor rum raisin. And they go, we, uh, let's see your idea. Oh, oh, I left in the car. I'll be right back. And he disappears. Then you get someone which my, my age, and they go, hey, I understand you got that liquor rum raisin. My wife's next door buying some shoes. Let me have some while she's busy. You know, <laughs> that was the other crowd that he was getting. But he controlled it with the, the dual sign. But I am very concerned about image. And uh, if CBD oil is going to be sold, fine. Let them get it somewhere else, not your ice cream. Uh, if, if you're going to sell alcohol, I'm all in favor of it. If you're going to do it and sell it in uh, those gelato pans to private parties for Christmas, I make a Grand Marnier liqueur ice cream. It's an orange liqueur uh, with the taste and the aroma and the little specks of orange in it. It's killer. It's $40 a bottle, which is also killer, but it's a heck of a lot more fun to send that to my Uncle Louie than a tie. And so uh, there are places that you can do it. The floor is yours, sir. I'm done. No, you didn't say anything. Well, if you're going to... Here, have a seat. We're going to uh, do the questions and answers. Okay. If you're going to propose the argument of image, yeah. because I'm selling adult flavors as well as regular flavors, how would that translate to you selling dairy-free ice cream and presenting an image of a health food store to those people who could care less about that? Dairy-free won't give you a buzz, and everybody knows that it is just a non-dairy product. I'm not the, saying I'm a health food the store. Buzz, that's, that's, but that's the connotation. No, it isn't. Oh, sure. Not at all. Not one person here thinks I'm selling uh, avocado. Well, the guy uh, in the back. Does. No, they don't think I'm selling uh, organic avocados. Well, you have a problem with the kid eating non dairy ice cream. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's well, right. getting a buzz is not against the law. <laughs> Do I want it for my kids growing up Your in town? Your kids can't have it. We so, card everything. So now I'm mark limiting the market that can come in. Do you have Do you have teenager Do you have thirteen year olds coming into your store? Yes. No. Yes. 
Yeah, how many? What, well, with their grandparents. We, okay, not very often. And then how do you get how do you get young kids to work your store? You know what I'm saying? Oh that's boy, that's an idea. Too. What? They're so underage they're and they're selling alcohol. Who says they're underage? Well, you can. A lot of people are going to hire 17, 16 year olds. Well, I won't. Maybe you won't. But you're still I limited. It's fair to say that there, there's, are, there are pluses and minuses of it. It's like it, it would be no different than if I choose to carry a root beer float and I also choose to carry the alcoholic root beer float for the father. So the kid comes in, they want to sit down, let's have a sit down, they want to have a root beer float. It's, it's, it's marketing and how I'm choosing to manage it. But there is certainly a level of responsibility to that and there's certainly a risk that somebody could say, well, you know, why can't you just be happy with just a regular root beer? Well, but uh, what he was talking about is the connotation, the, the perception of your store. I don't think my store has a perception of being uh, an, uh, like a bar. An no, but I think it's a nice place. club that sells ice cream. Well, be that as it may. <laughs> you know, there's many ways to get to the bank. Yes. What about one idea I was thinking about was just create a li little different brand name, make your alcoholic ice cream, but... There's a few restaurants near me that they make fantastic sandwiches. People come in and get them to go. They also sell various alcohol right. and all sorts of prepackaged foods. Why not? I think I'll, that's just, great. I'll create a different brand so it's not even tethered to the name of my company, a little different brand name. Sell it to them and then they sell it in that venue. It's I think that's from. ideal because you're not scooping it in your store with families coming in. What percentage There's, of people you think come into my store, and we're very busy, we're very busy, were, there, were we busy last night? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, what percentage you think, or now on the boards there are 20 adult flavors, 20 regular flavors. Over the years, what percentage you think would buy the adult flavors, and what percentage the regular flavors? I bet 50% probably with that adult. Half and half. Yeah. That's all, half and half. I bet, yeah. So I don't think we're chasing anybody away or we're... Uh, and, and you know what? I don't think you need one or the other. I don't, I don't think if I didn't have the adult flavors, the place would be just as successful. Because what we've created there, we created an, an, an environment, an ambience, and, uh, and I think we'd be just as successful without it. I'm just saying that your image is extremely important and you have to at least be mindful of it. Yes? Right. Do you think that your success would be as good as your clientele was average age of 30? Of course. He keeps telling me that they're, you know, they come in in wheelchairs and, and with the walkers and, and assisted living people. It's not like that. No, but here is what happens when you get older. You're sitting down to dinner at 4.30. Oh, uh, wait, let me, let me tune up. Yeah, please do. <laughs> All right, when you're ready. You're sitting down to dinner at 4.30, and your wife, thank you, your, your wife says, it's usually the wife, okay, you, you're cut off after two glasses of wine, and you crumble, and you have your two glasses of wine with your dinner. And then about 7.30 at night, you turn to your wife and say, hey, let's go over to Jeff's and get some ice cream. Because you know darn well there's an ounce of bourbon in the bourbon vanilla ice cream. And she says, yeah, great. And so they both get into their car and come over. And they're both fooling themselves. But they know that they're getting a little nip and tuck. One nip before you tuck them in for the night. <laughs> and uh, that, and I'm sorry, that, that's is, an old Three Stooges joke. And the point <laughs> is? The, the point is they're, they're coming to the store for the entertainment and also for the alcohol. But I don't feel like you're getting... Uh, you know, obnoxious, fall down drunk. No, of course, course not. Yeah. You'd have to eat the whole three gallons <laughs> to even get a slight buzz. It's, it's, the, it's the image. It's not the amount. Right. It's the image. I don't want to do a, I wouldn't want to do a store selling, maybe we should just talk CBD. I don't want a store selling CBD because I don't know what the next pharmaceutical the, is going to be that comes along, but I don't want to sell that either. The minute recreational pot is legal in Florida, the minute, the next minute it's in my ice cream. Okay, and you watch how many ice cream parlors go out of business that do that. Because it doesn't if match... If they do it exclusively. It doesn't match the MO of what the ice cream parlor is about. Yes. Well, okay. I, I, I think it's... So I'm a chef. I'm not actually an ice cream maker. I'm a chef. And that's the new and up-and-coming thing, is now making foods and everything laced with CBD right now, but yeah. it's going to be edible marijuana. Of course. So I'm, I'm absolutely... Of course. Ready. 
it would be in my story. Of course, I don't see the date maybe where you'll go in and have veal parmesan a la Jamaican. I'd be willing to bet that the business doing that will be out of business in five years, whereas people have ice cream parlors that go 30, 40, 50 years. It's a tradition. It's what we do. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Come here. So oh, he wasn't. I think it's fair to say that, that you know, Colorado being probably one of the first states to legalize and, you know, pull up and get fill up your gas tank and pick up some grass at the same time and go home, it didn't mean that every restaurant immediately converted over to... No, it didn't. It, it, so I think you're, you're, you're right in saying there are some things that are going to hold traditionally and some that people that are going to push the envelope. It's no different than ice cream flavors. You're seeing flavors out there right now with bacon and all these other things that will never were never part of the traditional flavors. So there's always going to be people that push that envelope and, and offer things out there, and there's going to be consumers that like it and consumers that don't like it. But you know what? I'm never going to alienate anybody by not doing it. Uh, well, I could can, alienate no, people you can't by serve doing it. all masters. Yes, you can. <laughs> We've been doing it for a million years with ice cream. You always said everybody on earth wants to eat ice everybody. cream. Everybody. Not everybody wants to have CBD in it. Well, but you, that's why you have a variety in the store. You told, me, you, you told me you didn't like variety. For a long time, you wouldn't even sell. You said you wouldn't touch Italian ice or cream ice, which they are the same thing. Only because of the logistics of freezing. It. Okay. But, but to have adult flavors, regular flavors, uh, flavors geared to kids, M&M, Oreo, flavors geared to adults, uh, all the, that's what I want. I want, to, uh, I want to have a variety of flavors. So it's all, yes. Can we change topics? We sure, sure can. You want to talk about Please salmon? Do. No, I love that. Talk. So is any ice cream related topic in play here? Anything is Anything. in play. So we can talk about the Yankees. I noticed that. I, I love it. Not the Red Sox. Yeah, and then you're ticked at the one guy that didn't vote for Derek Jeter. I guarantee you. I am not. I bet I voted for Derek. Okay, so, back to ice cream. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, ice you're no cream. fun. No. Here's my question. I, you said something, and it's been two hours ago, I, I really like that you used flavor identity was one of the phrases, and I think what you were saying is you want to infuse the flavor in the ice cream, and Jeff does that by like grounding Heath bars to a powder. Yes. And then it's in the ice cream. It's great. But then when it comes out, you could have little frozen chunks that you put in there too, which I thought sounded like a neat idea. I guess my question is, you do that with fruit flavored ice cream, so if you're, you know strawberry, raspberry, etc. And and is there certain ways you need to treat those little pieces of fruit before you put them in there? I, I do it with everything because um, we not only eat with our taste buds, we eat with. Uh, I think you're covering my microphone. We uh, also eat with our eyes, and uh, that's extremely important. So yeah, the the more you can do that, the better. Um, yeah, if you've ever made homemade ice cream on a little tiny machine, say strawberry, and it doesn't break up the strawberries, you know they turn into little marbles that'll break your teeth. Uh, what you do is something called uh, sugar the fruit. You, you take your strawberries and you cut them in half or quarters and put them out on a cookie sheet and then cover them over with a light sprinkling of uh, sugar, put them in the refrigerator, oh, put them in the refrigerator overnight and the sugar will be absorbed by the fruit and now you can throw it in your ice cream and it won't turn into marbles. Or you can uh, marinate it in some vodka <laughs> and, and, and then it won't freeze. So then you add it in as it comes out of the machine. I do both, half in and half out. Half in and half out. Yeah. Okay, now ask the real important question. I'm not leaving. Yes. Um, we have a problem with anything with the cheesecake base of it's. It seems to be. It needs to froze harder. I don't know what the deal is, but we too much have. Sugar. It's just. Is it too much sugar? Is that what it is? We can't keep it. We'll put it in the case, and it's always so soft compared to the other ones. Well, so, the softness is a, a product of how much sugar. Whether it's sugar, honey, uh, anything, syrups. Alcohol. So if I was making it homemade, do I need to run it longer in the machine? You're talking about cheesecake ice cream? It's cheesecake ice cream. Well, I make cheesecake ice cream, and it's, uh, uh, can I say this? Yeah. Okay. It's, right. it's perfect every time I use the Jell-O no-bake cheesecake. I seen that on his video. 
Um, ours was a lemon cheesecake. It was it was phenomenal. It was so good. It had chunks of lemon cheesecake in it. Ours is bought ice cream. It's not. We we done the chocolate shop brand, but that's. <clears throat> but anyways, it was just very good ice cream. But um, we every time you go to dip it, it's just so much softer than all the rest. So um, I didn't know if when we're if we're making it homemade, if there's something we need to do different, if we're putting actually chunks of, of you know cheesecake in it. So is it something, you know what, I don't even know how I'm asking this, but what do I need to do? Whether you're using Jeff's... If I was Jeff's, making it homemade, would I have to do something different? Whether you're using Jeff's chest freezer or a bona fide dipping cabinet, put it in one of the four corners. They're both wrapped in Freon lines going all the way around. So the box might be six degrees, uh, but six degrees at the center where I'm sitting and then over at the corner, the refrigeration's hitting this way and then going that way. So it's colder at the four corners. You ever go into an ice cream parlor and you see one, the server scooping ice cream just fine, but there's one flavor that is just really struggling? They don't know that tip. That really struggling flavor should have been moved to the middle of the cabinet. And the softer flavors, like my lavender runs very soft because of the high sugar content. Put it in one of the four corners and then now everything scoops the same. Easy. So when you make cheesecake ice cream, do both of you always just take a mix and, and kind of dump it in the machine and that's it? I mean, you never actually make a cheesecake. I've never made it. That's Jeff. It's great. I make turtle cheesecake, blueberry cheesecake, cherry cheesecake. Just using the mix. Yeah. The mix goes in and that's that. And don't you yeah, use but, cheesecake in Yeah, key lime. But it's, the mix is the cheesecake mix. Then I add uh, maybe some Smucker's preserves, cherry preserves or something, make it cherry cheesecake. Duncan Hines apple pie filling, make it apple pie cheesecake. Uh, boy, they're great sellers too. So does it depend on the amount you're making for the amount of the bag of the cheesecake you would pour in? Like huh? it's bigger? Okay. Yeah, Looks everything's proportional. Okay. Uh, and I, I guess, I don't know if it's in the book, do I have cheesecake in my book? Cheesecake ice cream? Probably sell my card today. Hmm? You could probably sell that recipe in that box. Well, I think I might have cheesecake in there. And I even make adult cheesecake. I make uh, blueberry cheesecake for adults, which is uh, blueberry, <coughs> blueberry schnapps, blueberry liqueur, blueberry liqueur. No, I don't use the flavored vodkas. I find they're too strong, uh, really strong. I like liqueurs, except for rum. Rum, I use, you know, Caribbean, dark Caribbean rum. But I don't use vodkas. I use uh, liqueurs, amaretto liqueur, uh, coffee liqueur, Baby. all those things. Banana, I make bananas foster with a banana liqueur that is out of this world. I had that yummy. You had that? Yeah. Last night? Yeah. It's very good. It is very good. Yeah. Chef, you mentioned making more exotic, different flavors. And I am really big on that. You've got your traditional flavors, of course, uh, but the, the whole world of ice cream has been turned upside down by the millennials. And I'm a salesman. I, I own the company, um, and, uh, but my, my tax return says salesman. And so a salesman is always looking for a reason to go back and see a customer. You loved me when I sold you my, your, your Toyota, so now I'm looking to sell you uh, a pickup truck. Uh, you're already a happy customer. So they love you for your ice cream, but now if I can text out on Thursday night a new flavor uh, to get you to come in uh, and try it, uh, that's going to be really exciting. I, I had a lady once who she talked about how Tuesday night was her slowest night of the year. Might as well not even be there. You got to be open. But she said, I don't think we're making 50 bucks. I mean, I, I hate standing here. We have no business. And it was suggested that she um, try advertising, or she came up with a, a contest. It's for women only, and for a reason. And uh, you send in an idea for a flavor that you'd like. You'd like to try avocado chocolate ice cream, which I'm going to make next time, uh, next class. And um, put it by the Shark NATO ice cream. I will do that. You'll love it. Um, so I'm going to make avocado. I advertise that uh, the winner this week was avocado chocolate. And so the, the lady who won that we picked her flavor, she doesn't have to come up with the formula. She just has to come up with the idea. So, and a chocolatier told me this one. So uh, she now is the winner of the contest on Thursday night that we advertised on social media, is now going to be allowed to come in 
next Tuesday with five of her friends, women only, and we're going to make avocado uh, chocolate uh, ice cream. And um, what happens there is, again, Tuesday night's her slowest night. So she's got five ladies plus herself making ice cream. Uh, well, where's the husband? Where are the kids? Where are the grandparents? They're all in the parking lot because mom's making a new flavor for this store. So they're all there just waiting for her to come out. You know, the smoke comes up from, uh, you know, the cathedral and uh, there is this new flavor. They already have a huge number of people they never had before because of this contest. Everybody gets excited about the contest. They can't wait till next Thursday night on social media to see which flavor wins. Those are the things that you can do with social media and exotic flavors that are fun. Like I said at the beginning, Jeff makes guaranteed flavors you're absolutely going to love. I make flavors sometimes that I have no idea how it's going to come out. I, I do it by mathematics uh, and say we need this much this, this, and this. And Jeff will attest to it. Some of them are awful. Some of them are unbelievable hits that even he's impressed by. Sharknado up there, there's a shark over there. That was an unbelievable disaster. I think, I think the point is, and it's really a valid point, uh, not the way he was talking about it, but the point is that the days of lemon, cherry, and chocolate Italian ices are gone. And the days of vanilla, chocolate, strawberry ice cream are gone. And unless you really start to dream and envision things that you never even considered before, you're not going to succeed in this business, I believe. I believe in the next few years, and I think we're at that point right now in the business where, where we're coming up with things, uh, the sky's the limit. The sky is the limit. I just ordered saffron. It's, it's an expensive uh, spice and flavor, but I think these are the future. Uh, his lavender. Years ago, lavender? Come on, they thought you wore pink shoes. Yeah. Nowadays, it's fine. And, and the inclusions also, you know, instead of just adding chocolate chips, we're going to start to add things that are, are interesting. Uh, you know, maybe we'll add chocolate shavings or, or uh, uh, whatever. Uh, but there's so much we can do now, and we have to. If you don't, you're going to fall behind. Because the guy who's selling chocolate chip brownie Italian ice. We made that first thing Monday morning. The guy who's selling chocolate chip brownie Italian ice, as opposed to the guy who's selling chocolate, where are you going to go? Yeah. It's a no-brainer. So really, keep a notebook by the side of your bed and dream. Whatever you can think of, it may not work, but it's adaptable. I, I keep a highlighter. <laughs> um, if you take nothing else away from this class, uh, and by the way, vanilla is still the number one selling ice cream in the world. But if you take nothing else away from this class, learn what I learned. I'm about to compliment you, for God's sakes. The takeaway that I got from working with Jeff all these years was when he told me that he shops for his flavors at, uh, at the supermarket. That was a huge breakthrough. I mean, yeah, sure, Publix is going, uh, security with that vagrant is in aisle three, <laughs> wandering around, pick them up. But Jeff goes up and down the aisles and, you know, says, well, mm, pickles. No, I don't think I want to make pickle ice cream. But they're but, doing that. But they're doing it. And right. uh, we're going to do it. Uh, so the, the point is that um, keep an open mind and the supermarket is your best place for flavors. And in the supermarket, more. check the jello aisle. There's a yeah. hundred boxes of Jello, all different flavors. They're a step ahead of us. And if, if they have cherry pistachio Jello, hmm, I can make cherry pistachio ice cream. Uh, it, the, spending a million dollars of research. Of course, done they've done it all. The sky's the limit. Uh, but always look for flavors everywhere, everywhere. Uh, just anything can be made into ice cream, but you got to do it because if you don't, you're going to fall behind. There's a question back there. Yeah? No, I said I made pickle ice cream. Okay, and how was it? It went over well. We had in yeah, your... But you uh, don't make it again. I will. We had the pickle king of... Uh, yeah. I think it was the pickle king of Memphis in here last month. Yeah. And he told us how to make pickle ice cream. You also had a question. Oh, mine's very simple, actually. Um, liquid chocolate. Are you familiar with it? No. Stratticella. Uh, so it's where... No, it's where you're taking one part oil five parts chocolate 
and what it does is when you cook it down, it gives you a viscosity. It's like a chewiness of the chocolate. And I was curious if you know when to add it to the batch, if you're adding it into the mix or if you're adding it at the end. I never heard of it. Okay. Kind of I can tell you a better idea. Okay. You take a block of chocolate, I think they call it enrobling chocolate, and you uh, heat it up in a double boiler so that this block of yep. chocolate is melted down. Mm -hmm. And then once the ice cream is getting nice and cold, if the batch is eight minutes, maybe about four minutes <coughs> into it, I take the hot chocolate, I pour, don't try this with any other machine. I, I pour it into the machine and that hot chocolate hits the cold ice cream and shatters into a regular size pieces of chocolate candy. It's fabulous. It's, it's just great. Uh, the Italians do it. They use a bottle up there by Fabrique called Stratticella. And Stratticella just means uh, it's a chocolate chip ice cream, but they're pouring in uh, a very waxy chocolate that when it hits cold, it, it immediately hardens and shatters. I do it with a high quality chocolate and let it shatter, not because of the makeup of this cheap chocolate, but because uh, it's hitting a cold surface. So you not only get vanilla ice cream, you get an irregular sized piece of chocolate candy in the ice cream. It's a lot of fun. And then I had one more question about the peanut butter chocolate. So you're a Haagen-Dazs man. Do you eat the Haagen-Dazs peanut butter chocolate? Uh, no. Okay. So. It, it, like you, the minute you go to scoop, you're getting a big chunk of, of peanut butter in the chocolate ice cream as a ribbon. And I'm curious, if I put that in the machine, is it blending or is it? It's a variegate. No, a variegate that you would do after it comes I would out. I do it after it comes out. So basically, what I'm doing is getting Hold the ice cream as soft as possible, and I mean the, the peanut butter. And then as it's coming out, I'm kind of ribboning it in. Check the videos. We have many variegates okay. in the videos. Uh, one of the great ice creams I think I make is peanut butter and jelly. Okay. I make peanut butter ice cream, and then I put a ribbon of jelly going through it, and it's really good. And I do that as an Italian ice. You just need more flavor because water has no flavor. Um, yeah, if you put, you can put peanut butter in the machine. But uh, you'll, you'll curse me because you'll be uh, three days cleaning it. Exactly. And then it also, even if I do it at home, I end up getting more of a peanut butter ice cream versus the peanut butter clean in the, in the, with, inside the ice cream. Jeff, Jeff has a very unique way uh, of using a, a bucket and making with, with, with the blend and the peanut butter or other things, a variegate that he pours in and it works perfect. Thank you. Who else? If you combined peanut butter, I made an ice cream at home where I kind of combined peanut butter with the base got it all liquefied, so the peanut butter was liquefied, it was in the base, could you dump that in the machine? Yeah, sure. you can. Yeah, you're sure. just saying don't take peanut butter out of the jar and plop it in there. Oh, you're sure you can you do can that too. You'll sure be cleaning you it for hours though. I'll tell you the way you I will, do, it. Can do it. Uh, you can do it. Same with Nutella, you know, because they're so thick. What I do is I take a bucket, pour half of, we did this, pour oh, wow. half of the mix in it, and then we put the can of Nutella in it, and we use the drill, and it was perfect in the machine. Same thing with peanut butter. Just use white mix, uh, regular 10% white mix, and then take however much peanut butter, a jar, I usually use 40 ounces. Put that in there, drill it up, throw it in the machine. And then when that's done, uh, I pour it into the, the large buckets, the six quarts, and then in the smaller one, I make a variegate out of usually Smucker's uh, or Welsh's even, grape jelly is perfect because peanut butter and jelly. And I, I make that into a gravy consistency, pour it on top of that peanut butter ice cream, take one of Steve's big spatulas, fold it four times, and then squeeze the tub and pour it, and it's beautiful. Isn't mm -hmm. it? And you get a great ribbon of jelly going through the peanut butter ice cream. It's perfect. I so, think we're ready for lunch. Everybody ready for lunch? We'll continue this after lunch. We're going to make some more fantastic ice cream. So I'm going to make a lemon ice cream. Jeff's got something planned. And uh, when we're all finished today, about 1.30 or 2 o'clock, anybody would like a tour of uh, this building. We have another building up the street and one over there, but we're going to tour this building. This is the main assembly building. We'll show you how these machines are built. Okay, let's make some ice cream. I've just been given the go-ahead. To make, <laughs> remember when the kid used to do that? Yes. Used to do this and then. Yes. I remember. Let's see if I can get a good noise no. out of it. You got to wet the tip of it. There we go. You got to wet the tip.
Okay, so, oh, you feel that heat now? Boy, I think it's going to be a little much. Well, how about if we not put anything on and just let that heat? There. Okay. So I have one flavor left to make. Um, oh, by the way, uh, the engineer, the video engineer advised me that there's rumbling. So let's keep the back row talking absolutely to a minimum. Better yet, let's cut it out. No chewing, no swallowing, no texting, nothing. No breathing. No breathing, he says. All right. Uh, so how full are we? Too full to have another uh, heavy ice cream? No. No? no. It's always room for ice cream. Okay. See, that's a good thing. Always room for ice cream. Uh, okay, we'll make... By the way, I only have three books left. We'll make tiramisu. Yes. What? That's good. That's nice. Really? Tell me something. What flavor is tiramisu? Coffee. Coffee, Coffee and cream cheese and whatever. Mascarpone. Yeah, mascarpone. That's the tradition. Mascarpone. Hazelnut. Mascarpone. Hazelnut. Well, none of those ingredients are in my tiramisu yeah, ice cream. Really. Uh, this is in it, <laughs> uh, but I do have other stuff. So, um, let me see, half batch, full batch. Uh, I think a half batch. Yeah, I think that'll do it, right? Otherwise, whoa. All right, so the ingredients. We need a half batch, we said? Did we just say that, half batch? Okay, so we need five quarts of mix. Get one more bladder for us. Five quarts of mix. Do we have any left? No, vanilla. Okay, five quarts of mix. How many ounces of vanilla? How many ounces of vanilla? Five. Five, thank you. All right. Now I'll tell you what. Here's a graduate of our class. Brian Rich. Open it up. Take out a bladder. Where's Brian? Over here, right? Right. And put five quarts in there. Let me get my glasses back, sorry. <laughs> Why are you adding vanilla when that's already vanilla? Uh, it's just me. Okay. So that one's already flavored as a vanilla mix. Well, you say flavored. There's vanilla in it, but but not to these finished. people make mix. I make ice cream. Oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I was just curious. Okay. Now these bladders are a little tricky. Now Brian, of course, is an expert at it. Rich. Rich. Brian's an expert, too, at it. <laughs> so five quarts. Good. All right. And, uh, no, don't do that. He'll be pouring on like a fool. Now, by the way, when I make ice cream, uh, and we'll have it next time, I use, a, you know, the rolling carts from uh, uh, Harbor Freight. They're, they're gray plastic, but they're industrial uh, carts. And what I do, these are my recipes, but I like to have everything on the cart before I start making the ice cream. This way I don't forget. Is there a dog approaching me to my left? Yeah. Come on, bud. Come on. Come on, hey, come on. Uh, no, I can't do that. Yeah, he's our dog whisperer. That's Rex the dog whisperer. Good, made another friend, huh? All right. So, the ingredients are going to be, thank you, the ingredients are going to be the mix, the vanilla, uh, 
some tiramisu. Uh, Steve calls it syrup, but it's not syrup. These are just liquids. Syrup I think of as laden with um, corn syrup, but, but th there's none of that in here. Vienna fingers. Remember growing up, Vienna fingers? Woo. You know? Who doesn't know about Vienna fingers? No, we all do. Okay. And chocolate chips. Chocolate chips. Here. <laughs> uh, the, the blue bag up on top is chips. It just didn't fit in the other container. All right, so we ready? That's what's going into this. Mike, I don't think the microphone's on. It doesn't work for them. Okay. <laughs> it's the voice. So we'll add, uh, and I usually like to uh, have a bucket ready underneath. Whenever I start, I keep a spatula up here on a little lid. These are lids from the Nutella buckets, but any will do. And I always keep this here so that when you pull this away, oh, never mind. All right, so this will go in here. Thank you. And we'll add some Vienna fingers. They should just slide right in. And let's see, we'll add, uh, oh, say all of them? These machines are great. You could put rocks in there. Should we add some rocks? Okay, we added a couple of them. And we'll add... Uh, we'll add some of this. And some vanilla. No vanilla? Why? I think we're going to add some vanilla. Five ounces of vanilla. <laughs> What's wrong? Something's obviously wrong. Well, we're not done. We have to add some chocolate chips. How many ounces? A quart. Why, Charlie? Starting with your recipe, you were supposed to put You have the recipe in front of you, don't you? All right. Okay, are we done? We're done with the ingredients? Fire it up? Fire it up. And now what are we going to do? Oh my. Oh boy. What oh my. What are you making? Oh, tiramisu. Oh, nice. You can have that. What's in it? Tiramisu. Oh, okay. Tiramisu, Vienna fingers. Remember Vienna fingers? Yes, I do. <laughs> Vienna fingers. 
How'd they come up with that? I don't know. It's not from Vienna. It's from the Bisco. <laughs> the Keebler. From yes. Keebler. Yes, it's not fingers. Vienna fingers. Okay, so we're we're good. Where do you taste this? This is 20 cents a serving for you guys. Because it's now the premium stuff. That's what we're in for. Okay, a new flavor. What is this? Lemon juice. I don't like that real reconstitute. Really? Yeah, it costs a lot. So what is this? It's uh, real lemon juice, not from concentrate. Um, are you sure? No. Say concentrate? No, it says not for fresh pressed juice. Yeah, not from That's concentrate. Interesting. It costs a lot. Did you smell it? No. It smells like lemon juice. It's it's a it smells weaker. Wow. Well, How could that be? It's it's the real deal. Yeah, it is the real deal. What's this? Yeah, Santa more Cruz. The same. same thing, different company. Smells a little lemonier, doesn't it? Yeah. So we'll use those two first, Santa Cruz, and if we need more, we'll okay, back we'll it with see, this. Yeah, we'll see. This is and what I this for sugar. This is what I wrote up as a guest of the sugar. Four quarts of ice cream of mix, a quart of lemon juice. Yeah. Where'd you come up with this? Me. Just off, just sitting watching TV. And some of my videos and uh, guest at the sugar. Turmeric. No, I'm not going to put it in, okay. but I, I just, it gives me a chance to talk about okay, it. Okay, so we got a quart of lemon juice and a half pound of sugar in four quarts, so that's a half batch, a quart of lemon juice. How much is in here? Varies. This is uh, 16, so a quart is, is two of these. Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll see. That should be good. Okay. Well, it'll be a good start. Yeah. And then we'll play a little we'll bit. We'll play with it. And uh, we'll have to zest some lemons. I got the zester ready. Yeah. I need to open this up. Uh, let's uh, paper plate the zest. Zest. Wasn't zest a soap or something? Yeah. Right? Zest, you washer. Okay, break out some lemons and I'll zest them. Uh, I need to borrow a knife. Ooh, uh, this never mind. Is great. I got a knife. What? No, we're not ready yet. But you gotta test it. Now I know how many more minutes. <laughs> how was it, by the way? Pretty good, yeah. Okay, zesting of lemons. This is what we're gonna make uh, after Jeff's. This will be our final flavor for the day. Why this goes fast. It does? It does to me. I feel like I've been here all day. You have been here all day. <laughs> what a shock. Any questions while we're... Yes. Gelato is a lower fat ice cream. Uh, when it first came to U.S. shores, it was in San Francisco, and they didn't know what to do with it, so they used 16% mix with uh, Italian flavorings. 
Uh, it, it depends on where you are in Italy. It can be as low as 4% fat. Uh, I like to run somewhere between 8 and 10. Uh, so I use the 10% mix for gelato. And then uh, it is different flavorings. Um, they have, this is a company that I like. Uh, this is called Fabri. F-A-B-B-R-I, Fabri Flavors. Their company is as old as us, and they're in Bologna, Italy, just down the street from Capigiani. And uh, I still recommend them because even though they're in bed with Capigiani, I recommend them because it's the best around. This is just the flavor. So if you're doing Fruit of Tabasco or tiramisu or hazelnut or anything like that, this company, Fabri, makes uh, fabulous flavors. Uh, really the best. That, that goes in as your ingredient. Is it a different setting of your machine? Yes. You push gelato and it's going to take it down to a very low speed. Uh, the only speed lower than that is going to be frozen custard. Uh, so it's going to be a low air content, lower fat content. And um, I was teaching at Penn State, as I said last weekend. And um, everybody there was Italian. I mean, not, not the people. But all the manufacturers were Italian, all the flavor companies were Italian, and they were making all this Italian gelato. And me being the wise-ass New Yorker that I am, I got on my phone and said, hey Siri, of all the ice cream sold in the United States of America, what percentage is gelato? And held it out, and Siri goes, 5%. <laughs> So do you want to build a business around a 5% selling product or a business around a 95% selling product, ice cream? If I had the space and if I wanted to do it, I would have a small freezer of just gelato flavors, uh, but it's, it's coming less and less, less favorable in the United States. It was all the craze uh, in 2010 for about three years. Everybody was gelato. and. Um, People were coming back from Italy. Italy was a big vacation spot, and they'd come back and they'd say, oh, the best gelato in the world. There's nothing like it in America. There's no ice cream like it. I said, were you on vacation? Yeah, they were. How was the wine? Oh, it's the best world, uh, wine in the world. Nothing like it. And the food? Oh, incredible. I said, let me ask you a question. Wise ass New Yorker. Where does a Heineken beer taste better? Under the 3rd Avenue subway mugger mover in the Bronx, where my factory was, or on a Caribbean beach uh, in, in uh, St. John's. And of course, it tastes better on a Caribbean beach because you're on vacation. So I said, I rest my case, and they're all going, huh? But the, so gelato is all that's sold over in Europe, but what's sold here in the United States, in North and South America, is all ice cream. And as Jeff keeps saying, everybody in the world uh, wants ice cream. The other problem I have with gelato, and we make better gelato than anybody because we're using fresh dairy, they're using powder. Um, if you, uh, you just don't see a mother, a 35-year-old mother, walking in with her five-year-old daughter, and the five-year-old daughter is tugging on mom's dress going, Mommy, could I please have a tiramisu? That's not what they say. Can I have Cookie Monster? Could I have Mint Chip? Can I have, uh, you know, whatever flavor you can think of that's, you know, Americanized flavors? This is what people buy. You can love gelato, you can love dairy-free, but you gotta sell what your market wants. That's the important thing. Yum. That looks delicious. What is it? Tiramisu. Tiramisu, you said. Okay. During the um, gelato craze, I helped open up a business, a gelato business of all things, in West Texas. And they called up a, a month later and they said, we got a problem with the store. I said, what's that? They said, nobody ever heard of the product. I said, well, tell me about it. Well, this, this uh, guy comes in and he orders a teramatsu. And, and the um, lady behind the counter goes, well, sir, I'm sorry, that's called tiramisu. And he bought it and was thoroughly insulted for being corrected. And they said, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, it's fine. Do what I do when I talk to people all day long and I have to remember difficult, long names. Put it up on the sign, Terra, T-E-R-R-A. 
space. Ma as in mommy. Sue as in the girl's name. Tara Ma Sue. Next time that guy comes back in, he's got his buddy with him. They got out of the pickup truck and left the hounds in the back. And they come in and says, come on in here. I'm going to buy you some Italian ice cream. I'm going to get you a tiramisu. And, and his friend goes, dang, I didn't know you spoke Italian. <laughs> so if sometimes you have to adapt. Wait, and, <laughs> but um, bump? Yes. That was okay, it. Come try on some up. of this. You want to try some? It's alcohol. Huh? It's alcohol. No. Tiramisu is No alcohol, alcohol in this. No alcohol? No. All right. Oh, man. That's good. That's really good. Usually you put it in Madeira wine. No. Nothing. No alcohol. Oh. Mmm. Yeah. That's good. I need four. Hello, whoops. They're lining up. Now we're making lemon ice cream. Your daughter's going to like this. She's still waiting for that Italian. She's going to like this. Trust me. I can't wait to try lemon ice cream. No, no. What's up? Yeah, right, right. Oh, you're a good man. Thank you. Do you see paper towels? Here we go. Thank you. You or Mike? Uh, Mike, but I can make mine when I go in. Okay. There's Mike. Here's a spoon. What do I label this? Tiramisu. T I R A M I S U. Okay. How's that? Good? Excellent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, for our last trick of the day, we're going to make lemon ice cream. Now, one of the companies my grandfather put into business in 1910 was Bluebell. Bluebell out of Texas. Great company, started with Emory Thompson Machines as a ma and pa store and grew from there. And Bluebell, I was in public supermarket, that's our supermarkets down here in Florida. They had lemon ice cream. And I fell in love with this. I fell in love with it so much that I bought uh, uh, 10 half gallons of it because they'd never had it before and they've never had it since. And I thought, well, this is a problem because once I go through those 10 half gallons in about six months, I'm going to be out of lemon ice cream, so I better learn how to make it. So I showed it to Jeff. It's got some lemon color in it uh, that they get from turmeric. Uh, if you're not familiar with turmeric, it comes in pills or a liquid, and it's, it's great for uh, aches and pains. Uh, and it also is a nice way to color something yellow uh, instead of, you know, you using yellow number dye, yellow dye nine, uh, you can use uh, turmeric, and it does a great job. We're going to leave it out because Jeff was suggesting that if we grate off, as he's doing very kindly for me, a, a, a you know thankless job of uh, scraping the zest, as Chef calls it. Uh, I call it the specs. 
uh, off the lemon. Now, it's really not going to add anything to the flavor, but it's going to really look nice in this white field of ice cream with little specks of lemon. And it is, after all, lemon ice cream. So I'm going to see if I can duplicate this. This is loaded with corn syrup, so I think I can do it better. Say it again. No, uh, 1910. 10? 10. Yeah. Been around a long time. Uh, we also put Hershey's, Briars, Bluebell, Seal Test. Uh, all these kind of, all these companies began just like you, Ma and Pa. And then they choose to grow to more stores, and sometimes they uh, just continue expanding. And what happens is they go to a different type of machine that makes a thousand gallons an hour. It's not the same ice cream. And so someone walks in to Austin, Texas and says, gee, there's no homemade ice cream here anymore. Uh, let's start up a store. And then they start from square one. They come back to me and buy a machine. So this looks daunting not to spill this, but let me see what I can do. Look at this. Old one-eyed Steve is not spilling a drop. <laughs> Anybody hear the music of C6 uh, Steve? Anybody hear of him? No? Oh, it's great. Someday we'll play that over the, the loudspeaker. Um, so, my formula. The sugar, we're not, we're going to do the lemon juice. I want to put the sugar first. Uh, you did the sugar? No, I'm gonna, we're going to do it to taste, so I'm going to put the you sour in. you put the in sugar first. in the machine? I'm going to let you put the, I'm going to put the sugar in the machine. <laughs> Not no. what the manufacturer recommends. Yeah, well, I'm the manufacturer. I have this nasty habit of I get to do what I want. <laughs> yeah. Have you made this before? No. No, never. Yes. No. There is not. Okay. I'll just turn that up a little bit. Now, right now, it's thoroughly mixed. I don't have to do it any more than that. 234 revolutions per minute. That's, that's really moving fast. Do you want to take these home for anything or not? No. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Okay. Now we're going to figure out the sugar. What do we have? A quart of lemon juice, right? Yeah. Do you want to start with a half pound or? Well, I guess, uh, let's see. A half pound won't be enough because that's tart. Yeah. Always add. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they sound like Jeff Markow. I can take away. How would I do that? You would add more lemon. No. More, add more mix. Add more, add more mix, of course. Is the scale zeroed out? No, because I don't have the container. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right. So a quart here. of lemon juice in how many quarts of a? Four quarts of mix. So I was going to start off at a half pound. You want to go more? Well, we'll see what this is. That's a pound and three quarters, isn't it? Yeah. Bring it down to a. Oh. <laughs> how do you know it's not going to curdle? What? How do you know it's not going to curdle? Why would it curdle? Because you have an acid and a cream? Because we're freezing it. Yeah. If you were cooking it, yes, it would curdle, but if you're freezing it, it won't. Okay, we'll try it. it's this. not frozen right now. It's in very cold mix, 34 yeah. degrees. Okay, which machine are we in? I have CV. How much can you do? What are we putting in? How much can you do? one pound. One pound so far. And 
that's it? Two ingredients? Just as asked. Oh, I had a cup for you. Here you go. More sugar. You think? You Don't think forget, it's, it's lemon ice cream. You want it to be lemon. You want some tart. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm good with it. I'll do a Joe Pesci now that we tasted it. <laughs> I think I wrote down that one pound. <laughs> that was my mathematical. I think we can fire it up. All right. We'll add the zest. See, never made it before. Knew the mathematical values of it. Uh, this is why, well, let me start it. Uh, so I'm going to go to make ice cream. I'm going to do super premium again. Start. That's going. Turn on the refrigeration. We're going. Um, I, I don't agree. I mean, I, I'm a bad salesman because I tell people, no, don't buy a machine to experiment for a year or two. Um, because, you know, just get into business. You've got uh, my formulas at the website and they're going to make you great ice cream, but you're going to then vary it to your own personal taste. We can teach a thousand people how to make ice cream and every one of them will have a different vanilla ice cream or anything different. Yes? Kept it at uh, one, one, pound. Pound. You've done one pound. One pound. So I was wrong, it was your decision. Yes? You mentioned your mathematics. You mean your recipe as far as your Italian ices? That you have not made this one before, so you're replacing a orange Italian ice with lemon Italian ice, and that's the difference? This is a lemon ice cream. Uh, no, it, 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 is, it is different because dairy has flavor. Uh, so, um, okay, when you're making Italian ice, uh, I'd be using uh, more lemon ice, lemon juice in here because the dairy has no flavor. It's just sugar and water. I need a lot of flavor. When I'm making a dairy, the dairy itself is, is a flavor. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of people will call ice cream frozen with no uh, flavor and it's sweet cream ice cream. It was usually made at 11 o'clock at night. The ice cream maker was tired and forgot to put in the vanilla. So rather than uh, throw it out, they write up on a chalkboard, special flavor today, sweet cream ice cream, and, and sell it. It's unflavored mix. It's delicious. So, but when I'm making ice cream, I need less flavor. So if I was doing this as a lemon ice, I would have almost double the uh, lemon juice. Anybody else? All right, let's see it. No, I can't. Can you juggle? No, hell no. Can you make one disappear? One should disappear in about a minute here. Okay. Look at this. Ooh. All right. We're getting this on tape. See one disappear. Yeah, very good. <laughs> that was great. Last, last uh, ice cream. Now's the time to ask your questions. Wow, I think we answered everything. No, they're just in a, yes. in a days. Uh, because I want slightly less air content than homemade. If it was my store, I would probably do uh, homemade because I want the maximum volume. Plus, I know my employees are going to knock 20 to 25 percent of the ice cream out. Uh, the proper way to scoop ice cream is to take your scoop and go in a circular motion around the tub, preserving the air. That's what all the videos show. The, the reality is that hurts. If you don't believe me, pick up your pen when you get home tonight. I don't want to see you in pain. Pick up a pen and just go like this in the air. Your wrist and your arm will hurt so bad you'll never do it. Your employees won't do it either. They're going where the strength is. It's in the biceps. They're going to scoop from north to south. So if you're doing it north to south, you're knocking 100% down to 90, 80, probably about 75 percent overrun by the scooping method. So you have to refactor all your price schedule based on you're not making 100% overrun, you're making 75% overrun. So I will make the 100% overrun so I then can price it at 75. I'm not going to change my employees. As soon as I'm gone out of the building or not looking, it's not like this because that, that already hurts right here. Uh, they're going to go like this. So. And, and it's subjective. The higher the fat content, the more air I'll put in to compensate for the, against the fat. So fat isn't always a great thing. 
Anybody else? Unless you're on the keto diet, then it's a big thing. Yeah, it is a very big thing. <laughs> now, keto ice cream. Uh, I've, I've already done it. And um, it had a, the, the keto ice cream had a, that I made had a uh, nasty little product in it called multidextrin. And if you buy, I'm a diabetic, so I try to watch what I'm doing. I'm not, my pump's over here. Um, I try to watch what I'm doing as far as sugar, though we all cheat. So that's why the pump, I can just calculate more. But uh, the keto ice cream, uh, in order to keep the sugar out, uses a product called multidextrin, which is a modified food starch, whatever that means. The problem with uh, modified food starch is, uh, if you go to CVS, they sell bags of chocolate, sugar-free chocolate candies. And uh, if you're like me, I don't eat just one or two and put it away, I eat the whole bag. It's a little bag. And then you wonder why you've got, excuse the expression, but you've got diarrhea for the next two days. And then on the instructions it says, consuming more than two of these candies in one sitting may cause distress, stomach distress, otherwise known as Montezuma's revenge. So I do not like uh, multidextrin. Um, because people will eat it in quantity, and that's the only way you can get around the, uh, the sugar problem. So I just tell people on a keto diet, diet, you know, call me in 30 days when you go off your diet, and we'll give you the best damn ice cream you ever ate. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, you shouldn't be eating ice cream. Uh, you shouldn't be eating pastries either. Yes? Why would you not recommend upping the uh, butterfat content in your base? And overrunning it more, beating more air into it to thin it out, and adding more flavor to compensate for your expansion. And what was the first part about the butter well, fat? Well, in other words, if you increase the butter, butter fat, yeah. uh, but also increase the overrun. Because, so it, yeah, I won't change what I said this morning, that a high butter fat ice cream is going to sit heavy on your stomach, it's going to make you sweat. It doesn't matter what you do to the air content, the fat is still there. Uh, you're not eating as much because you're not serving as much. You're not, it, your your it, serving it, size. It's, it's up to you. It's a personal uh, thing. It's just been my experience that the people in very hot climates has nothing to do with Ohio or Michigan or Boston or California. But very hot climates, high fat contents will upset your stomach. And that's why the sales are low. Uh, sales of ice cream down here are nothing compared to what they are in New England. And if people compensate by lowering the fat content, the sales go up. So it's, it's a money thing. Uh, I want to sell what people are going to like. Right. Not, I mean, there's no, I, I don't believe in the bragging rights of New York City that if you're 14%, I'm 16%. It, it's not making it better, it's just making it fatter. So. Yeah, and I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go any higher. And then you're, right. you're running it on the machine, and then right. you're looking for a right. whatever I want, whatever uh, air content I want. Uh, the beauty of this machine is you can be running it at super premium, and a chef comes in and says, "I want a Häagen Dazs weight ice cream." Okay, chef, no problem. It's going to cost you, uh, you know, two dollars a pint more, but yeah, we can do it. Uh, you can do anything you want with this. We I can get a more dense ice cream by slowing it down. Yeah. Uh, and some people correlate uh, density to quality. Yeah. I, I know that's not true. But from a standpoint of can I do it, yes, I can because of the infinite overrun control. What the infinite overrun control does is it gives you the possibility to make anything that's on the market today and anything that might come along. When NutraSweet approached me back in the mid-70s um, with their NutraSweet product, um, they, I, I, it was in Chicago and I wanted to go into the lab and make the ice cream for them. They wouldn't let me near it because they had this new product, NutraSweet. Uh, but it did have different freezing uh, uh, characteristics than cane sugar. 
So it was something to experiment and play with, and this machine uh, would have been able to do it back then. We didn't have it then. I'm gonna, this, this looks good to you. Oh yeah. Okay, turn off the refrigeration so it doesn't get any colder. I gotta find a spatula. I'm having trouble with spatulas today. Hello. Here we go. Oh, excuse me. So, how about some more ice cream? And here we go. Please try not to eat it all because it's for me. But I could make more. And will. Actually, this one's mine. Let's see how nice and fast that comes out. And I can even speed it up from here. Six liter. <laughs> this is different than what you had all, all your life, probably, but it's, it's very good. A liter is about four, right? Isn't, isn't a liter approximately? Well, I'm glad you think that because we're not going to do that. Oh, Christy. Uh, that's for me. If you'll put. Steve and a skull and crossbones. And, and use the police tape and everything else. Oh, Thanks. Okay. That. Thank you. Is it the best one. Is it good? That's the best one. And that's my first attempt. So it's not hard. It is mathematical. And, and taste buds. You, the, you know when you put it in that you're going to have something. You, you put that on top of a hot piece of blueberry pie. Ooh. What? Yeah. Oh, sure. I tell you, it's uh, lemon ice cream is addictive. You mean the popsicles? That's right. That's right. It's like cream ice. Almost. Yeah. It's 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 not hard like the lemon ice. It's mm -hmm. softer than that. Yeah. It's coconut. It's called Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So just. Um, how to make that. That? Yeah. Oh, to me, it's a coconut Italian ice. Uh, so I can only yeah. think on the big machine. Seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of water, and two quarts of coconut. Uh, like, a, if you didn't have coconut, you could do, you could do it like the dairy-free. You could use coconut water instead. Seven pounds of sugar, 14 quarts of coconut water, and I would say two to three cans of cream of coconut. And cream of coconut, the Coco Holados. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's not called that. That's my customer. Uh, Coco Lopez. Coco Lopez. Yeah, that's expensive. If you go to the supermarket, they have plastic, white plastic cream of coconut containers. And it's just as good and, and delicious, and it costs less, which means I can use more. Mike? Because remember, that's your flavor. The sugar is not a flavor. The coconut milk is not really a flavor or coconut water. But the, the cream of coconut is. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Oh, it's good. I like it. Really good. Does that taste like the the bluebell? Um, totally like different. The fact that the, the bluebell is using corn now. syrup, yeah. and it's a the bluebell is not nearly as tart. So it's I think I like this better. It's perfect. I like this. Um, in a minute. Yes, done. Chrissy, would you see that Paula gets some of this? Everybody does. Okay, because I want her. I definitely want her to try it. This is uh, very, very good. Very, very good. Mm. It's uh, you got the lemon coming through. You got the ice cream texture. It's it's not too sweet. It's uh, in my mind, this is perfect lemon ice cream. 
I don't know if I could sit down and eat a pint of it because of the tartness. Oh, sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You feel satisfied after really a small serving. It's very good. Steve, I don't know. This is two in a row that I'm impressed with. Yeah, me. The lavender? Listen, Jeff, no one's more surprised than me. <laughs> <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> I am very impressed and surprised. I can't believe I, I got such a good winner. Where'd you get the, oh, from the Bluebell you from got the From the Bluebell. Now I don't have to worry about Bluebell shipping it in for me to Publix. Now you know what I might add if I were selling it in my store? I might add white chocolate chips to it. Oh yeah. Yeah, just Giadelli to, white chocolate yeah, chips. Yeah, Giadelli white chocolate chips, chips, just to kick it up a little and that keep would be the fun. pale color yeah. and yet give it a little, uh, a little texture. Now, was that, that was on confidence? Yeah. So I, I have a question. I'm curious. That there's not, when you set what you want, there's not a timer on that at all. There is a timer as a running time meter that tells me how long I've been running, oh, but no, okay. there is no shut-off timer. Okay. Uh, Capizani, I, I came up with that uh, in about 1974 uh, where we took an amp meter and uh, it, what it did is it measured the load on both motors so when it got to 10 your ice cream for vanilla was fine. When it got to 12 uh, your strawberry was fine. And this was going to be for a franchise if one came along uh, that I could just hand a book and say here's how you make your ice cream. Capizani took my idea one step further and made it so that the, the amp meter shut off the machine, you know, stopped the freezing. So we're doing trade shows together all over the country, and a lot of them were side-by-side -side demonstrations. And the Capigiani guy is uh, making, say, lemon ice cream, if he was, and uh, my machine's running and I'm checking it, and his machine, he's talking, it just automatically shuts off. But he has to go over to it and kind of go do like this and turn it back on again because it's not ready. It was ready for vanilla, which it was programmed for, but nothing else. And they called that first the Heartomatic, and then they changed it to the Heartatronic, and now they've even juiced it to where they're telling you that it can sit for an hour and a half without you having come back to it. Well, I don't want any food that's sat for an hour and a half on a machine that's turning it on and off. It's churning it to death. Um, but yeah, the, the timing is real easy. Uh, you just keep in mind, the higher the sugar content, the longer the freeze time. So vanilla is gonna be your shortest freeze time. Anything that adds sugar, like the lavender was all sugar, that's gonna increase the freeze time. And you know, you make it once, and you can make a note on your three by five file card. Hey, the lavender took uh, 12 minutes. And so now, next time you make it, you know, okay, it's gonna run for 12 minutes. And with that, if you'd like a tour of the, this factory, I'll, I'll take you around. This is our assembly, main assembly building. And um, thank you all very much for coming. It was, it was our pleasure. You were one of our better classes, if not the best. One class was so bad, Jeff and I just walked out. <laughs> I said, show yourself. <laughs> it, was, it was frightening. <laughs>